We're here to make baseball fun. We're about to have mad fun. All right. I, am yeah, I love how we're in the same outfits as we were yesterday when we tried to take <laughs> I know. I was looking at that. We just basically just like click and we're back. All right, three, <laughs> two, one. Welcome everybody back to the Built Different Podcast. As you can see, Wolfie's here, so we're here to talk some baseball. Wolfie being the one below in the Angels hat. Thomas Axby being up here in the Derek Jeter Hall of Fame New York Yankees jersey. Um, We got a lot to talk about today. This is High and Inside, episode 28. Um, We're going to be talking about, you know, players that you would want to date your mom, steal your wife, some overrated players, (laughs) some underrated players, the offseason, the Texas Rangers winning the whole thing. Um, So make sure you guys, you know, stay tuned because this is going to be a very, very fun episode. I don't have an opening take. All I got to say, Wolfie, is let's just get high and talk some baseball, my friend. Yes, sir. Let's do it. That's what high and inside is all about, baby. So, Wolf, how you feeling, man? Why don't you hit us with your opening take? Yo, I'm feeling good, man. Uh, yo, baseball, I know that it's over with the World Series and we're in the off season, but there's a lot of exciting things going on right now. Managers are getting fired. Managers are getting hired. Heck, you have a manager in the same division going to a, almost a rival with the Padres and Giants. You have uh, players being signed already. There's already some contracts that are out. Um, you have some uh, you know, trade talks going on. So there's exciting things. But one thing that kind of got overlooked is the fact that the Oakland Athletics have officially confirmed that they are moving to Vegas. It's crazy. Vegas steals another team from Oakland. Go figure. It's, it's, <laughs> it's wild, man. Like, dude, there's nothing left in Oakland almost now. Like, it's crazy. But um, the one thing I want to talk about, though, is that I didn't realize, though, that the stadium... I know, obviously, it has to be built and everything. You know, talks. It's not going to happen overnight next season. But it's not happening until 2028, perhaps, that they're actually even going to go there. So, and also their lease is up on their stadium after this season. So I'm curious, are they going to get like a new three-year lease to go back to the Coliseum for three years? There's even some talk about them playing at Oracle Park where the Giants play. I'm like really curious. And if you're a fan, like if, if there's some Oakland fans out there watching, I hope there's some out there. Are you going to even go and support your team these last four years? Or is it going to be <laughs> packed out so people can get the last chance to see the Oakland Athletics? Or is no one going to go? And Sachs, my last question to you with that is with them moving do you even see another team moving in the near future because i look at it like this a lot of the teams that are bad aren't necessarily like always bad or have a good like foundation they kind of like you know it's it was kind of like almost foreseen this was going to happen yeah man um wow you know that that's crazy that you mentioned that cuz like even the even the raiders got their stadium <laughs> when they when they were stolen from oakland so that actually, it, it's a it's a very shitty situation, and and one that I want to say um, is honestly probably one of the worst things that happened to baseball because if you look at the Oakland Athletics, it's not like they're you know some trash franchise that never won anything, like they won nine exactly. World Series championships. They were one of those teams back in the day that you lumped with the Yankees, the Pirates, you know the the Orioles, you know the winners of the league, like the top the top teams. I mean, the, the last World Series they won was 1989, which, you know, sorry, Wolfie, don't mean to come at you here, but, like, that's yeah. even more recent than the Mets. Um, so to see how badly they've been mismanaged since um, that World Series to what they became now, like, Moneyball was cool, but they didn't have to drag it this far. They literally dragged it to the point where they lost their whole franchise, and it, it's a mess. Do I expect anyone to go and support? Hell no. Like the the athletics fans, they it, it has been a dark time for them the last twenty years, man. Um, exactly. Not, not winning anything. Um, try to get your kids to like the athletics is a sounds like a very tough fucking job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not even like I don't think I've ever seen a kid athletic fan. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. So that had that has to be a hard sell. I'm I'm kind of glad that they're moving to Las Vegas. Um, it was them or the Rays. Um, the Rays they got they got their new stadium, so hopefully that changes some things. Yeah. Um, but man, that like it's weird. It's gonna be weird. I, I feel like they should just make any kind of baseball field and find a way to throw thirty thousand people around it, and until something new is made, because I don't. It's it's not good. Because I mean, there was rumors that they might share with the Giants. Um, you know, all this, all this crazy shit. 
So I think even the Padres were in that talks too. It's just uh, especially this day and age, it's very hard seeing that. Like, what would you even charge for those tickets? Because not people aren't gonna come if they're like. <laughs> You yeah, know? that's a good point. Like, <laughs> like, like it, it'll the basically same price be a destination to like come watch a free MLB game because the, the tickets are only going to be like the the best tickets are going to be like ninety dollars, and that's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, you know what's kind of would piss me off too if I'm a fan is that I'm pretty sure ownership's not changing. No, so, which is weird. Like I would have. Do you know how much money they're going to make? Like that first, like think about when the Golden Knights f- was formed. They made bank because it was like the new thing. Like you know, probably people are still gonna go. I mean, unless the product is that and bad, they won't. But they'll probably make some banging money on that. For and the first Las Vegas of years. is like a, believe it or not, like Las Vegas and Nevada is a popular state. Like yeah. people don't like it's not just a tourist attraction. Like there's pe- like come on, we got there's people there. legit MLB <laughs> players from <laughs> Vegas. So. You yeah, know, Reno. I, it, to answer your question, what team that I could see moving in the future? Um, I know I told you the Nationals yesterday, because um, yeah, we tried to do this episode yesterday, just it just wasn't in the cards <laughs> for us. Because um, the Nationals are genuinely a mess, but they won in 2019. They do have a lot of money because the the years that we were good, it definitely boosted the the worth of the team. It's just a disaster right now, all the way around. Um, the the Rays, they got their new stadium. <coughs> Um, uh, who, who's in the central? Maybe it'll be a central team. You know, because the one team I was thinking of being bad, but it's like once you just said, like the Royals, but they just yeah. won in 2015. Have won before, like have had success in the past. You know, and they're getting a new stadium. They got their new stadium as well. Yeah, and like I said, a lot of these teams that are pretty bad too are like they have a good fan base. Like the Rays right. are actually pretty good, and they have a. Not a great fan base, so it's like, and now they're getting a new stadium, so they're off the table. So it's just I, plus the also Milwaukee looking Brewers. at it too. <laughs> yeah, imagine, because and the one thing, and I hate to say this with Oakland because it's not their fault, but you also got to look at it. California has a shitload of teams. Yeah. Like they actually can afford to lose a team. Like Colorado is not just going to lose a team out of nowhere. Like let's be honest. Like I don't see that happening. So it's just I also look at it geography wise. Like if. They kind of almost were a target to lose a team with how many they already had in their state. And I mean, I think the the Texas Rangers are a perfect example of what you should do as an MLB team is pay players to come. Like, I mean, <laughs> like the Athletics, wow. yeah, like they they had some winning, they put some winning seasons together. They put some absolute amazing seasons that we, of course, loved watching together. But if you knew that they weren't ever going to win a World Series that way, though. Like and the Rays were another great example of that because the Rays did basically the same exact thing. It's just they were just better at it and they didn't win either. They came close, but I don't think it's ever like a sustainable strategy to just play the analytics, trade all your good players when they're ready to, you know, get big money and it's just it's not good. It's not a good strat. And to prove your point even more, actually, like it's it's almost like more of a slap into the face of the A's is that you can't sit here and be like, oh, well, you know, the Astros had the division, so we were still rebuilding and all this. It's like, dude, look what the Rangers just did. They're in the hey. same division as the team that's been winning the World Series the last few years, and they over, over like, thrown the into the throne. The and, Mariners like, why can't made, you do The that? Mariners made away, and they haven't, you know, made the playoffs in how many years up, up until last year? So Yeah. So I don't want to hear that it's not possible. Your own division, someone in your own division took over the Astros' spot. So it's clearly possible. I think I think it's also crazy that the Angels, with all the talent they had, accomplished basically the same thing, maybe even a lot less than the Athletics did in the last like 20 <laughs> years. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> oh, like, my oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. And that's the thing is, like, yes, like, the Athletics are bad. I just, man, I, I wish it was pushed for ownership to get out of there, honestly, because... Like, you know, I think the fans deserve better, uh, but it's not like that. It's still not like the athletics were terrible. Like I said, they've won a more recent World Series than the Mets. Um, they've had more success than the Angels in the last 20 years. Um, but these two teams, we're going to keep around because we, we love we love making fun of the Mets and the Angels. Um, but, <laughs> you know. You bring up a good point, though, because it's like... It, it's kind of what I was saying, too, about the ownership changing, is that if he doesn't start to spend money, it's literally the same thing, just in a different state. 
So and I don't, if you're you not, are a fan not of that be team, that's gonna be with f- that in Vegas. Like, yeah, dude, Vegas I know is, they, Vegas they can't. Has a big roll of the dice. Like they would have like come on, they would have paid for Jacob Degrom. Like you kidding me? Like they would have. Yeah. Like it, if you're gonna be a Las Vegas team, I feel like you have to do that. And like I get and to talk about a different sport, I get the Raiders are really bad. But they're playing up to that Vegas moniker of just fucking rolling the dice and seeing what happens. Like, they got Devontae Adams. You know, they got Jimmy G as their quarterback. Like, yep. you know, Josh McDaniels as the coach. Like, they're just, they're rolling the dice, Not maybe, because it's Vegas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now it's Antonio Pierce as the coach, yeah, which is yeah, a Giants fan. Which I love. I Dude's about. a dog. I, and you actually brought it up, too. I actually am personally a big fan of Vegas teams so far. I do think it's a city that needs to be more involved in sports, which now they have three teams, which is great for them. Good I think it. it's just a good destination, though, for, you know, when we always talked about them or Nashville or Charlotte. Like, I actually think Vegas is, like, a top Because, bro, Vegas is, like, the ultimate spot now. Like, they got the sphere. I know. They got the... Yeah. Now they're, they have sports teams. Like, just imagine you're going down this strip... I'm pretty sure these places are part of the strip too, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're all like very, very close. That's to what I'm too. saying. So imagine your trip to Vegas is now like that much crazier if you're a sports fan, which I love. Well, I was even listening to the radio recently, and they even said too that's actually why the attendance numbers are so good because a lot of people just go to Vegas just to go to Vegas, and now it's like, oh well. Oh shit! The baseball Raiders are playing game, somebody this week. On. Fuck! Let's go. Yeah, I'm. Go- yeah, so and that's what they do. So like that's. So smart of a business plan too. So that's why I do hope they put money back. Steal the Oakland teams have the and make them great. <laughs> yeah, yo, I'm gl- I'm fine with it, yo. I'm here for it. Yeah, man. So why don't you tell us about uh, a little a uh, little giveaway that we're doing with this episode? Yeah. So the holidays are coming around. Everybody knows that. First off, I want to thank everybody this year at the Built Different Podcast. You know, you guys really hyped us up this year with you know. YouTube subs and Facebook engagement and shorts and all that. You guys so are making our dream come true. Exactly. So what we're going to do for this episode, and it doesn't actually just have to be this episode. It could be anyone's in our genre. Um, we're going to be doing a giveaway. You can get four entries into it. The first one is a jersey. Then we have a hat and a $60 PSN card that we're going to be giving away, or Xbox card. Um, and the way to get the entries, sub... Like and commenting is three right there. Take a screenshot, put it in the comments section. You know, we'll keep tabs on it. And then the fourth one is following one of our social medias, whether it be Instagram, another Facebook page that we have going on. We have a couple different ones, sports group pages. So get involved in that. Show that you join that. That counts as another entry. At the end, we'll put all the names together, make it fair. Whoever wins, you get a jersey of your choice, hat, or the card. Absolutely. And then we'll absolutely. List. So yeah, and if, sure. hey, I'll even throw this out too. If you want, if you win the jersey and you want to even wait like a month or two to wait for your like, you're like, oh, maybe Otani's gonna sign with my team. We'll even we'll work with you on that. So this is gonna be a good fun giveaway. And you know, later too, I'll talk about the maybe a possible tournament coming up. But this one's the holiday giveaway. You know, I'll throw I'll throw in a a fourth little entry. I know I keep adding on to your shit, Wolfie. My bad, my bad. No, you good, you good. So the fourth prize is that if you win. Um, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to have a special drawing where the winner will get to write their own podcast episode and be on it with us. I think that's, Ooh. I think that's, that's a good actually prize. a really good one. If you don't like, like that. that, if your name is chosen and you don't like that, we'll just give you a $20 PSN card anyway. Um, but I think that's, that's definitely a good one. Um, and yeah, make sure you guys like subscribe, you know, share, comment, sell your souls, get on the train. Cause this is one of hints two giveaways that we're doing um here for the end of the year um i will be announcing the other one in a couple weeks um so yeah make sure make sure you guys are a part of this absolutely yeah. and i'll say this too if you are someone that's already subbed that still counts just you know yeah, we just take need a the screenshot, screenshot of that yo yo because you a lot of you we got a lot of support from this group specifically the one that i'm gonna at least the mlb group i'm talking about this year for the mlb podcast uh yes, and, and we really appreciate that so it's just we want to give back, man. Absolutely. So, Wolfie, moving into our episode, Whew. let's talk about the top five most overrated players in MLB history. Let's get spicy. Dun, dun. Let's do it. You go first. We only need one. Derek Jeter. No, I'm kidding. No, we're not. I'm just going to throw this out here now to all the Yankee fans. I know you're going to like be like, I know he's in this list. I'm, I'm keeping him off the list. No controversy this episode. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe some of the other names, but... So, uh, so we got some overrated players here I want to talk about. It's hard to necessarily put them in order, but I'll try to you know do what I can. 
Uh, I'm sorry, love the guy, honorable mention, Brett Phillips. You, you're a little overrated in the fan eyes, but that's okay. You're a fan favorite, so I'll leave that out. Um, number one, and as a Met fan, well, number five, whatever. Oh, I was about to say, whoa, uh, we'll be starting off at number one. Yeah. It's getting hot in here. Uh, I really think, God, I hate to say this because a lot of older fan, like a lot of this list I actually haven't seen, so it's more of like just general perception, which I guess really does work with being overrated. Uh, Daryl Strawberry, man, was a bit overrated. I gotta say it, man. Like, the I hate sugar. to... Bro, and I was going to say, I know there's some backstory going on with his personal life, and I'm not, like, you know, here to talk smack about him. He is actually, like, an awesome dude now. Like, he's really good. With, an awesome know. dude now. <laughs> well, I mean, he had some problems going on. Though. He, I think he'll be the first one to admit that. So, but, hey, he won us a World Series. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, but, no, he was a fantastic Met. I mean, he had some awesome seasons. He almost had a season of 1,000 OPS, um, and that was 87, actually. Uh, I mean, sugar, the next bro. year was great, too. Dude, he... Pff, and uh, his buddy Doc, too. Uh, <laughs> but really, when you look at his career, he had a decent like career. It was about 16 years, 17 years. Uh, once he got off the Mets, though, like more, less than halfway through, he just was not the same player. He had a couple decent years, especially with the Yankees, but he was not the Daryl Strawberry that he could have been. Unfortunately, to say that... Uh, I know, like I said, there's some stuff going on that contributes to that. But every time I hear it, I always think like this amazing, you know, Hall of Fame player. But it was really just those Met years that he was good. So I feel like in just baseball eyes, he's a little overrated. Maybe not in Met fan eyes because we're just looking at his career there. But just in general, man, just a tad bit overrated. So Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's definitely a fair point. I, I like it. I, I can't argue against it. I mean, I, I remember Daryl Strawberry. I mean, obviously the Booger Sugar Mets. You know that that can't ever be, you know, taken off the table. But I mean, <laughs> I don't think he, it's ever coming around again either. <laughs> his last contribution to baseball was literally helping the Yankees win the World Series in 1999. Um, didn't really play through the year, but he came in and had an exceptional playoffs, and they won the whole thing. Um, so, and, that, and that's a one point I wanted to make. I miss when the Yankees would get players out of fucking nowhere and they would just like revive their whole careers but i think ever since they got like jacoby ellsbury that that ship has has sailed so <laughs> yeah uh i completely agree and you know what it's sad too i feel like also with some of these players you can almost make a flip argument it's like well this this and this makes him underrated but yeah you know i'm just looking at a general perspective too well, because uh, every every second. met fan will tell you that daryl strawberry is the go or some dumb shit oh yeah absolutely <laughs> My next one actually is Nomar Garcia Para. Woo! Uh, n- and you know it is no hate to any of these guys, but when you think about these names, you're thinking about some of like the prime baseball players of their time and this, that, and the other thing. But if you actually look deep into his stats, and I hate to say it because it's not his fault, but there's a lot of injury plaguing him. I mean, there was multiple seasons in a row that he wasn't even cracking. I think it was like 60 games in even a season. I mean, he was. Yeah, it was 38, 43, 62, and three in a row. A couple more here, but then back down again. Decent seasons when he was playing, but when you think about Nomar, you think about like one of the better players in baseball. And just numbers-wise, he really wasn't there. He even had a lower uh, career war, a lot lower than Dustin Bedroya. And we don't think about him almost sometimes in the same light as Nomar. So I really got to kind of pump the brakes a little bit on the Nomar overhype, like some of his fans back in the day love him, I get it, but he's just a dog, in retrospect, man. He, was he was a part of a really a good, good time player. in baseball, man. Yeah, and that's the thing, because when I think about him, I think about that prime of baseball, but it's just, he wasn't one of the best players that we've seen. He was decent, but not as good as everybody thinks. Fuck Dustin Petroia, by the way. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> no, not a Dustin Petroia group here. Um, <laughs> the next one would probably be... Probably be Jack Morris. I'll be honest. Uh, Jack <laughs> Morris, like every and I and I don't know if it's because maybe their history isn't as rich, but when you think about like Jack Morris, like oh one of the best Detroit pitchers ever. Like really, if you look at his numbers, like they weren't that great. I think his lowest ERA from glancing quick is a th- just about a three. Everything else is above that. Most seasons in the fours. Uh, I know he had longevity. It's a different time. So that's why I'm not really looking too deep into the innings. It's just it really is a different time of baseball now. But when you think about like one of the best like pitchers in baseball, his name gets in like the top like you know grouping, and he really wasn't as great as everybody thought he was numbers wise. Different times, I get it, but 
Jack Morris, I gotta admit, you're you're not there. Yeah, uh, man. I I mean, like what I'll what I'll say about Jack Morris is, granted, he's a World Series MVP. Um, he had he has three rings, two of which he he pitched really fucking well for Detroit. Um, but overall, like overall career wise, I don't think he should have been a Hall of Famer. Um, you know, I mean, long, <laughs> really long career though, like really good long career, 254 wins, but his career ERA is 390. And I get that's boosted by the end of his career, but like a, th- a pitcher with almost a four ERA being a hall of famer, I, I just don't know, man. And it's like you said, like getting grouped, like when you have the hall of fame label next to your name, you're automatically grouped with some of the best pitchers of all time. And I just... I don't think it's it's deserved at all. I mean, granted, two of Detroit's wins really came through the strength of Jack Morris, but you know, which he did technically get the MVP if I'm not mistaken in that '91 season. Yeah, uh, in the postseason, so, like, and I hate adding postseason stuff like that because there's times guys don't even get postseason chances. So I'll admit, at least in the postseason, he had a couple good years. But then if you actually yeah. look, there's a couple postseasons he didn't do great. Like uh, in '87, he only pitched in the one game and gave up. Yeah, like you'll see, like exactly what I'm talking about. Oh wow, eight innings pitched. Yeah, he also gave up six runs. So it's like, I, I can't really like rely. Well, too I heavy think it's on also the, the nostalgia because those are the last, the, like the last two times that the Tigers won. He was on. He was a guy. Yeah. So, so and then, like, we're yeah. not saying he's a bad player. It's just oh, we're, I we're talking no, about I'm some of the greats. <laughs> 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 we just lost all the Detroit fans. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, so uh, that was number three. Number two is actually going to be Bo Jackson. Um, and I want to talk about him in the light. If like any time he ever gets talked about in like an MLB like forum or social page or something, you get so many people running to his defense. Guys, he was a fantastic athlete. You'll never see what's happening now, most likely again, of the two-sport player. But at the same time, like he wasn't the best baseball player. I think if he spent his whole career playing baseball, he could have been one of the best. But he was a good baseball player, made some crazy athletic plays. But just the fact that he did bolt, I think, hypes up his numbers a little bit. He actually had a couple good moments, but like I just said, it's just the long... I need to look at like baseball stats only and longevity, and I just... He's... One of the best athletes ever, but he's not one of the best baseball players ever. I just want to throw that out there. So I and nothing against him. Great athlete, you'll never see it again. Uh, number one, <laughs> I hate to bring it into the conversation, Blue Jays fans, but uh, it's Joe Carter. Joe Carter <laughs> is so so overrated. Oh my gosh! Like you've said it the other day, Sax. It's like we think about some of the postseason moments. That's probably why people like you know think about it like that. And I understand great power. You know, a lot of RBIs, but when I'm also looking at OPS and career, you know, war, like, I hate to use war, but career war, he doesn't even have a 20 career war. 20. We just talked about Dustin Pedroia before. He had 52. This dude has 19 and a half. Like, it's, it's one of those things where I do know power is important, especially in today's game, but at the same time, there's also other aspects of the game. That when you can't even have a twenty career war, like that's not good, man. That he's so overrated. I hate to admit it. Yeah, and I I'll say I one hundred percent agree with um, Joe Carter. I mean, but he's another he's another guy that in the postseason, you know, he delivered the the Blue Jays championship um, with his home run. But what I'll say about Bo Jackson is I I don't consider him overrated. I mean. Okay, if you you t- obviously if you take football out of it, who he was out of it as an athlete out of it, yeah, like we can look at just his baseball career and be like, yeah, I mean this guy shouldn't be discussed among the greats. But at the same time, sports wise, athlete wise, he was the guy back then. I wasn't alive for it, um, but according to everybody I know and all the documentaries, he was the guy. Um, he played football and baseball before it was cool to be a two two sport athlete. He was a freak of nature. Um, he got injured, unfortunately. That injury is in big comparison to Derrick Rose's injury on like how much it really, you know, sucked. <laughs> but yeah. uh, you know, it's fair though, because some people do think like, oh my God, Bo Jackson was just a fantastic baseball player. And yeah, granted, he hit 30 home runs, you know, 100 RBIs, was an All Star, and that's great. But it was cut short. Yeah, that in 1989 season, I did bring it up quick just to double check myself. Like, there were moments that he had great seasons. Um, the problem is, too, actually, one thing I didn't even notice until right now is also the games, too, obviously, were cut down a lot more, too. 
that 89 season is probably why people put him in this like top baseball conversation because across the board only 135 games but across the board got you know an all-star top 10 and MVP good season but the rest of it combined he's just wasn't like this like powerhouse player that sometimes people forget that he or they think he was right. great athlete though great athlete absolutely so now we're, we're here at my list um all right so Ooh, now Saxby number spicy five list. um number five i'm going with christian yelich so Ooh. <laughs> the reason i'm going yeah. with christian yelich is um listen of all time yes most one of the most overrated players of all time because you know you see how he did in miami right you know great numbers but he was never and it was never even touted that he would be a a 40 home run guy it's he did it's not like he bulked up for it either um you know i think like his 40 home run season the two seasons that he had that were mvp worthy were so overhyped cuz like you just knew like christian yelich wasn't that player and that it was lightning in a bottle and yeah i get injuries happen but you can see it today the last two years that he's played almost every game it's just right like at the end of his Miami tenure. That's what we're back to. And I think that's who he is. But a lot of people overhype him. I mean, they said like this year he had some fantastic year. He did not have a fantastic year this year. Um, so that that's definitely number five on my list because just, you know. I, I actually have to agree with you, and this sucks because I am a Christian Yelich fan. I have his Miami jersey still from like, way back when he was coming up. <laughs> the problem I actually think with him, and I think someone like Cody Bellinger might have tweaked it a little bit, is that I think, well, I, not that I think, I know, they were obviously results of the uh, the baseball, whatever, being lighter, you know, the home run. The home run yeah, ball. yeah. So, and I think what happened is when he got that contract, was hitting those home runs, he had the mindset of almost, I got to keep doing this, and kind of strayed away from what he used to do, and he can't get back to that peak, so now he's just kind of lost where instead of just being like the 25 to 35 home run player you could be, you know, with decent defense, you know, a little bit of speed, like more hitting towards average, you could like at least, you know, be worth your value. But the fact that you're still thinking of like MVP numbers, you know, 40 plus home runs a season, like it's just right. not that type of ball. And just in general around the league, it's not that type of ball anymore. So you got to like kind of adjust to like what's going on with baseball. And I don't think he has. And he, he doesn't have a face that your mama could love. So... Uh, <laughs> I think Stan's also in that group too. I'm gonna say that him and his buddy they they made off with the with their contracts. <laughs> <laughs> um, so n- number four is I'm going Mike Piazza. I'm sorry, Wolf. I'm sorry, oh. Mets fans. Sorry, oh Dodgers fans. Sorry, fans of the catcher in general. But I'm going Mike Piazza. Strawberry man. and Piazza. We're gonna get hated by the Mets fans. Um, a lot of people, you know, will sit here and say he's like one of the best catchers ever best catcher ever you know whatever i just i can't say someone is the best catcher ever or even put them in the top three of the discussion if they were bad at their position i mean there's like there's average at your position and then there's bad and he was bad he was below average at at being a catcher granted he was a fantastic hitter you know i don't want to take the 9 11 moment away from him um, but Mike Piazza was terribly overrated, definitely did steroids, definitely doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame, um, but he, he just managed to do so. Um, got a lot of criticism for it, but I think Mike Piazza is definitely one of the most overrated players in MLB history. I, I, I this, this is the Met fan one I'm going to actually defend. Uh, I don't think that he's overrated because... When everybody talks about him, I don't think most people talk about his defense. Like, I think everybody kind of knew that he was, like, a below-average defender. He had a career about 990 percentage of fielding, so, like, whatever that is for catching, I don't really know. But uh, he, we know he wasn't the best defender. But, dude, the numbers he put up with his bat is incredible. I mean, dude, like, literally, like, incredible. Like, you're talking, like... Bro, the Royals uh, like, do that, over- Wolf. <laughs> it's, it's, he out of all guys man nothing really came out to confirm that like you know i'm i definitely think he's up there with that but you know him and Pudge I'll, got until i see the man. proof until i see that proof but it we're talking four seasons of a, over a thousand ops i mean he was in the top five of mvp voting four times six seven there so really f- like in the top ten eight times even with mvp uh, his rookie of the year season dude his numbers power wise were great you know, hitting at least 30 home runs a season, a bunch of RBIs, 
good on base percentage too, which you don't usually get to see a lot with uh, power hitters. So I'm just, I'm really, I understand what you mean as like when you look at the position as a whole. But when I'm looking at like batting wise, especially nowadays, most people pray that their catcher can hit at least 240. And dude, this guy was literally like an MVP candidate. So like for like, especially nowadays, thinking about a catcher being an MVP candidate, I, I, I don't think he's necessarily overrated, but I do see where you're coming from. Yeah, man, that's that's fair. That's fair. He also hit 242 in the playoffs. Just want to put that out there. Um, <laughs> Mets aren't notorious for being good in the playoffs. No. <laughs> um, number three, I got Nolan Ryan, right? Ooh. You know, strike me down, strike me dead. Um, oh, Nolan Ryan, no. I think, is overrated. Not like, listen, he had a long career. He threw 200 pitches in a game sometimes. Had some no-hitters. Had some great moments. But, like... There's a reason. There's a very, very good reason. One second. Let me just pull up his stats. Yeah, him too, actually. Cut this part out. But there's a very good reason why he wasn't a Cy Young Wolf. I mean, there was one season there that would absolutely blow you away, and he didn't even pitch the whole season from it. Um, So he didn't win a Cy Young, and the reason why is if you look into his stats, he has some high ERA years. He walked a lot of batters. So literally, Nolan Ryan would just show up on the mound. You would either shit your pants or not shit your pants. And he would throw like a (laughs) 90-plus mile-per-hour fastball, threw it wherever the fuck he wanted, whether it was 19 inches above the strike zone, in the strike zone, whatever have you. But he was not what you would consider a shutdown pitcher. And he often is brought up in conversations with people like Randy Johnson, Pedro Martinez, you know, guys like that, and I don't feel like it's justified. Like, yes, is he a Hall of Famer? Yes. Did he leave a good mark on baseball? Absolutely. Is he the all-time strikeout leader? Yes. But guess what? He's also the all-time walks leader. So, (laughs) you know. Yeah, that's a good point. He he was a dog. Nolan Ryan was a dog. And I don't want to take that part from him. But overrated as in I don't even think he's a top 10 pitcher of all time. No, I don't think he's top 15. Gave up a ton of home runs, too. Yeah. I'll not forget. I think he actually, 6.6, is that leading with home runs per nine? I think it might be, it is. actually. No, actually, yeah, hits indicates... per nine. Hits per nine is where he leads. Oh, that's what it was. Hits per nine. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, home runs per nine actually aren't the bad. So it was the hits. Yeah, so like you said, it was either strikeout, hit, walk. Um, see, to me, it's, it's, it's such an enigma to him because it's not that he's necessarily, like, because you're right, there is some overrated aspects, because when you think of, like, top pitchers, you don't think of a guy that's giving up the most walks in baseball. I think the thing that really helps him is the longevity and just how bizarre of a pitcher he was, because, like you just said, the fact that he gives up that many walks, but still has, you know, decent ERA, a ton of strikeouts, I don't think we're going to see that much anymore. It's like, walk, strikeout, hit, like, that's basically it. It's like, it's such a weird career that and you gotta remember when he first came up with the Mets, he was like a relief pitcher. A he wasn't even actually yeah. pitching that. So uh, it's his longevity really helps for him. I think if he like didn't pitch as long, didn't pitch as hard, we wouldn't think about him the same way. It's just he, uh, he's such a random pitcher. But you're right, there are a handful that are better than him. So not a bad call. And like I said, he pitched into his age 46 year, you know, and I love that. Um, but you know, as him being the ace on a rotation never won a ring. Like they, he never won a championship after he left the Mets when he was a reliever, like you said. Um, so, yeah, number two, <laughs> number two, Mike Trout. <laughs> oh my God! Um, so you know, the best granted, player of all time. <laughs> granted, you know, a, a great hitter. Um, I would still take Miguel Cabrera day and night over him during you know the phase where Mike Trout was going off. You know, great hitter, five-tool player, yes, fielder, exceptional. Um, but when you look at two two categories, leadership um, and the ability – well, I was going to say leadership and the ability to lead your team. But <laughs> <laughs> leadership I think those and are the just same overall thing. being the face of baseball, and these are two things that I feel like I shouldn't be holding against him. But when you're as good as Michael Trout – as good as he was oh. – <laughs> Michael, I said Michael. But <laughs> you're like, is it Prince? When you're something? as good as Mike Trout <laughs> is and you're talked about as much as you are, he was a terrible face for baseball. Didn't do anything to make baseball better besides show up and and whatever. Maybe he didn't want that. But when you have everyone else overhyping you the way they were, 
he couldn't rally his team, which I get it, Wolf. I know what you're going to say. The Angels didn't, you know, supply them with pitching. But, you know, why would you supply that team with pitching? It always came up short. And Mike Trout was a reason why they came up short, whether he was injured or whether he was there and players just would not rally around him. And, yeah, his, his hitting stats are great. He's probably going to be one of the all-time war leaders because it factors in everything. Um, but I'm, I'm here to tell you that the Angels – clearly would have been you know just as bad without him as they were with him so you know for that and i get it baseball is not a one-man team but we've seen one man do things to get their teams where they need to be when they needed to be so So i actually think that's a very bold take that you said that and i have to agree with you in the aspect of the leadership because and last year was a perfect example there was a couple series last year it was actually uh talked about a lot where all of a sudden he seemed like he was mad at his team and calling out guys but where, is, where though, was that, that over the last like 15 years or 10 years thank you. you you can't expect them to rally behind you when you've been this like quiet guy for 15 years and all of a sudden now you're mad like where was that energy with one of the worst teams career? that you have now <laughs> exactly and at the same time i will defend the angels on one thing i don't think they're a great run organization but they do at least spend some money man they did spend money on trout they brought in otani they gave rendon a huge contract might not have been smart but they did spend some money there you know, when Dylan Bundy was there the other year, he was actually pretty good for them. So, like, I'm, and they've had decent closing pitching. Like, I'm not saying they're a great team. Obviously, there's only so much he could do. But when you're, like, the face of baseball and all of a sudden out of nowhere are complaining about, like, where's the energy, it's like, bro, you were the one that signed there. Like, you, you could have signed anywhere <laughs> yeah. else that you wanted. So, all of a sudden now that you're mad at the way it ran, like, it's been run this way for like, a while. Like, literally, you, so, you've played with Josh Hamilton. Albert Pujols, you've played with yeah, all these, Albert, I played with all these yeah. guys and it didn't work then. What made you think it was going to work? It, like, it didn't work and you have Shohei Otani. So, yeah, like, yeah my, and he <laughs> was the pitcher too. So, like, actually, you did have some pitching. Like, I don't know. And I just, uh, just, just for overall, his, like, for his man. image, you're right. It's just, it's just not like, you. if you're that player, you got to bring more to the table than just the and I, I hate to make this comparison because it was a comparison that kind of haunted Bryce Harper as he was coming up in the league, the Bryce Harper, Mike Trout, Bryce Harper, Mike Trout. Honestly, I give a little edge to Bryce Harper because at the end of the day, Bryce Harper learned. Like, he wasn't a good leader either when he came up. Like, he was straight-faced. The Nationals couldn't rally around him. They Like, he just didn't – it seemed like he didn't care. But you see it in Philly. Now that he's finally developed into that leader, you can see – how a team can literally, you know, just mesh and rally around you because you could tell Bryce Harper is like the guy in that clubhouse yelling at the top step, you know, congratulating everybody just there in it. Even when he was hurt and he had the brace around his arm, he was there. Um, and you can see, like, because we know the Phillies don't have teams that could necessarily or should necessarily be as big of a threat as they are. But because of Bryce's leadership, because of everyone rallying around each other, they're there. And that should have yep. been the Angels. And that that's no, just I how I feel. I completely agree. No, you're absolutely right. It's just you you if to be this icon that people talk about with him, you gotta bring more to the table. And unfortunately, you can't like just do that when you feel like it. You gotta do that every day. You gotta bring that energy every day. Not that, oh you know, you won eight of the last 10 and you don't say anything, but all of a sudden you lose eight of the last 10 and it's like, no, you got to have that energy every single game, dog. Yeah. So, Mike all right, cool. So number one, <laughs> um, you know, people might not like this, but I hope people love this. Number one is Pete Rose. Um, so Ooh. I think he's the most overrated player of all time. Why is because he's the hits leader. The only reason he's the hits leader is because of how many fucking years this guy played. Um, <laughs> And, you know, granted, I feel like if I was to give you 24 years in baseball when I was in good shape, you know, I would do the same thing. But no, not not really. Uh, but, you know, 4,000 <laughs> hits, um, you know, over his span of his career, he hit 303. He won one MVP. I don't think if you asked anyone back in the day, like, hey, is Pete Rose, like, in your top 20 hitters currently in baseball? A lot of people would tell you no. Um, from the people that I've talked about, um, you know, postseason, you know, he, he did win three rings. That's that's cool and all. Hit 321. 
Um, but I don't think he's one of the best hitters ever. I just don't. I failed to do it. And also, he, he screwed a 16-year-old, so I don't really care about the guy. <laughs> Um, and that's a that's good point. I don't, I don't care about the gambling either. Like that's that's not what factors into this at all. Like I really have no care in the world that he gambled. Um, I just I don't care anymore, especially with it being legal. Yeah, like, you can't I, make it legal. I just think he's severely like overrated, guy, man. He just he played a lot of yeah. seasons. That's why he hit four thousand hits. Um, was he a dog in his day? Yeah, absolutely. But his career was like, like you, you could tell. Like he didn't. Um, like he barely hit. Over, he didn't hit over five home runs over a span of like seven or eight years. So his his career was Damn. His, his career was over like earlier than it ended. But because he dragged it out so much and hung on so much, yeah, he broke he broke the he broke the records. He broke hitting records. So the the big thing too is that like you said, it wouldn't be as much of a problem if people didn't hype him up as much or like the group that does. Because, like you said, there, if the power numbers... I'm not even a guy that's like, oh my god, you gotta hit home runs. But, dude, that's like you, what you just you, said. You can tell when stretch. someone's career is over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, to me, personally, like, was he a good slap hitter? You know, got on base? Okay. But there's a lot more to baseball hitting-wise than just that. Could he be one of the better average hitters in baseball? Okay. But the hype that you got around him, especially, like... From an older general, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, Pete Rose, Pete Rose. But like, when you really dive deep into it, especially with like players we have nowadays, I mean, like, bro, it's it's a different ball game, and it it evolves. And maybe at the time he might have been a good player, but just the hype that he still gets nowadays is like he's not there. Absolutely, man. So, moving on um, to our our next topic here is which players would you want to date your mom? <laughs> oh, my gosh. So yeah, oh which players gosh. would you want to date Mama Wolfie? All right, so <laughs> one thing I'm pretty proud of is a couple of these players played for the Mets at the time. So it's like, yeah, I guess we picked some, like, good, nice players. So I'm, I'm all good with that. Uh, one of the first ones that came to my mind was Lindor. The dude is just, I mean, Mr. Smiles. He Wolfie seems just wants great to with see his him wife. smile. Yeah, it's just like he's so smile. good with his kids. Yeah, bro. I'm like, yo, if he's a good dad, like, I, you know, if he could be my good dad, like, I'm all good with Lindor. <laughs> I mean, he's bringing some good money with him too, so like, I'm not gonna complain about that. No, but like, he seems like a genuinely good dude. Um, just some quick honorable mentions. Mookie Betts was also in there. He seems like one of those dudes that's just really good. Like, I've actually, you know, seen him with a lot of his family too. Um, Anthony Rizzo seems like a nice guy. He seems like a nice dude, man. Like, I, I, apparently, he takes his dog out and walks all the time to Central Parks. Really, like, you know, very good with the community. Just seems like a nice guy, you know. Yeah. He's cool. This one's actually for a different reason. I'm going to say Aaron Judge as well, as I mentioned. Because I know if he's there with him, no one's fucking with my mom. Like, the dude is basically a human tank. Like, no one's messing with that guy. So, like, that's a good protection benefit. Uh, my top one, though. I saw this, like... It's just his name recently, and I'm like, Curtis Granderson. Curtis Granderson. Aww. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Curtis Granderson, I love that guy. Great choice there, Wolf. But I'll give you first, I'll give you the player I would not want my mom to marry, and that's Trevor Bauer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, I was thinking that too. And him and Marcelo Zuna, I'm like good on that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, some honorable mentions for me. You know, I like your Aaron Judge pick. I mean, I think... You know, Aaron Judge is a guy I would want my mom to marry um, because he's a big dude. He seems funny. Seems like a nice, gentle giant. And he brings a lot of (laughs) cash with him, too. Don't forget that. Um, Another person is Justin Turner. I don't know. Bro, I I have him on my list, too. That's crazy you said that. (laughs) I feel like I want to just walk in and see Justin Turner just hanging out with my mom. You know, I feel like that would be something cool. He's so I got Adolis Garcia as, like, you know, a young guy. Okay, okay. A young buck. He seems very excited and passionate to live life. Would not mind calling him Papa. But the real Papa, the number one, is Big Poppy, David Ortiz. That's oh why I would want to marry my gosh. mom, man. <laughs> He'd be uh, like the he, most fun dad. You yeah, know. he's funny. You know, he probably like cooks amazing ass food. Um, oh, yeah. You know, he brings a lot of money. He brings a lot of stories. I'm here for it. David Ortiz to marry my mom. That Fuck is a it. solid pick. I like that, yo. <laughs> but moving on real quick. Who doesn't like him? So the Texas Rangers won the World Series. We haven't had an episode since they've won. Um, so let's kind of wrap up the season a little bit. 
Um, how do you feel about the Texas Rangers winning? I mean, I'm, I for one, I'm really happy because of Papa Bochi. Um, I love that the Texas, you know, Rangers took a risk with Seager, Semyon, DeGrom, and it paid off, even though necessarily DeGrom had nothing to do with it, which I'll argue. I'll argue that after Wolfie gives his take. Um, but yeah, man, the Rangers, they're here. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with them winning. Uh, they were it was either the Orioles or the Rangers I wanted from the uh, the AL side. I guess Twins I could throw in there too. Um, mm. But I'm good with them because of how fast they came up. Because they didn't mess around. They did what they needed to do, which was spend money, and they picked the yeah. right players. Now, I uh, the only thing I I guess the trade with Scherzer is a little weird, just because of Scherzer's track record at that time. It did work out in their World Series. He did good for four innings. Uh, the game before, or the series before that, he didn't do too great. Yeah. Um. So that was a little strange there. Uh, but the good thing about them is they had a lot of guys step up when Degrom went down. Like Dane Dunning wasn't even supposed to be part of like the main rotation, and he was solid throughout the year. John I had him on Gray fantasy. Had great, he was John Gray, really great at one point. Avaldi, the last even just the last game of the World Series, six innings strong. Uh, they had some good pitching, and it was funny. How about the that one trade thing, for Jordan Montgomery, man. Oh my gosh, dude! That was uh, that was actually one of the best trades. Of, you could probably make an argument that was one of the best trades of the off or the the trade deadline. Um, that was huge. Uh, and the thing is, too, is that I actually was worried about their pitching going into the postseason in general. We knew they had the offense. They had one of the best offenses in baseball. But their whole team just clicked at the right time. And they could win on the road, too, which was important. I think there was the series, was it them that they only won on the road? I can't remember. But whatever. They played on the road well, which is good, which actually won them the series. So... It's all up from here for the Rangers. I'm curious to see what more pieces they're going to add on. Are they going to bring back guys like Jordan Montgomery? Um, so I'm curious to see the next step in this uh, because they have a good team. So just, you know, keep it going. Yeah, and I mean, like, with the Rangers, they've rebuilt twice since they've been to the World Series the two years in a row. I really love it because, you know, I think back as I really wanted them to win in 2010 and 2011. I mean, you know, they had Adrian Beltre, Vladimir Guerrero, Josh Hamilton. Um, you know, I mean, Josh Hamilton's a piece of shit now. But then they had <laughs> jo- they had Josh Hamilton. We didn't know. <laughs> um, you know, they had some Neftali Feliz, C.J. Wilson, uh, Matt Harrison. Just they had so many guys that I just loved watching. And I Cliff Lee. You know, they they just had the teams, man. Uh, Mike Napoli. Um, that I, I just really wanted. Point? Huh. Was Cruz there at that point? I think he was, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nelson Cruz as well. Yeah. Um, I just don't want to mention that because I know Rangers fans. Like, it's crazy. Like, when I know. Nelson Cruz announced that he retired, it was after the the Rangers won, or I believe it was, bef- like, a little bit before. And, like, Rangers fans were in there like, wow, thank you for nothing. Oh, you know, fuck so you. I wish stuff. you would have just caught that ball. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you got to get over it, guys. You got to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people said that Nelson Cruz sacrificed his soul so that the Rangers could win, um, which I thought yeah. was pretty funny. Yeah, you got to give him some props. You know, they, they've rebuilt twice, and I, I think they're a team that should, again, like be an example of some of these other teams. Like, they went hard for it in 2010, 2011. Everything faded away. They had to rebuild. You know, they got all these prospects, Joey Gallo, um, Drixon Profar, um, you know, th- those guys, you know, no Mar Mazzara, um, you know, a whole bunch of shit. It just didn't work. So they rebuilt again really fast, and they got this team. And they've spent money, but there's still a lot. They had a lot of homegrown talent. Like, Evan Carter was out there going in. Like, Josh Jung was, was out there doing his thing. Um, I think Nathaniel Lowe was homegrown. He was doing his thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, really, a Jonah Heim... Um, you know, they, they have a lot of talent out there in Texas, and I'm really, really glad that it resulted in a ring for them. Because um, I know that that's their first ring, the Texas Rangers, and they've been around for a while. Um, so I know Rangers fans are happy, and you know what? Papa Bochi did his thing. And you got to give them props, too, because obviously they did good at the playoffs, won the World Series, but they, like, were contending for the division all year. It wasn't like it was, you know... They were one of the best they, offenses of all time at one point. Yeah, they didn't just, like, dethrone the Astros and sneak or like sneak in with a wild card. Dude, they were, like, the team this year. So I got to give them props for how quick they turned that around. And I just, you know, my big hat's off to, like, baseball this year in general. I mean, was this one of the worst TV rating matchups that we could have gotten? Of course. But 
I think it's just a testament to baseball. You know, the Diamondbacks, their record was not reflective of the team that they actually are, I think. And, you know, we saw in the middle of the season they were, like, second in the National League overall at one point. They just had a really, really bad cold stretch. Um, so I, I respect the D-backs as a World Series, you know, team. And I love that the team gave back, too, um, to the fans. Like, they made their um, home package where you get every home game only $399. Bucks. Yeah, I yeah. saw that, dude. That's crazy. And I love, you love to see it. And, that, and that's, like, the baseball is headed in a really good direction. Um, so congrats to the Rangers. But my real question for you, Wolf, is what was the best moment this entire season for you? The best moment for the season? Year. Yes. Uh, I thought you meant. I, I could lead this off. I could lead this off for sure. Yeah, I, I got thought three. You, I'm not gonna lie. I must have read the script wrong. I thought you meant for the series, like the series, like. Oh no, no, the, no, the whole season. Oh. But one of one of actually one of the one of them is from that series for me, um, and that's the uh, Corey Seager's ninth inning home run. I was I gonna mean, say I thought, that's one I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, that was huge. Um, Corey Seager's a dog. Um, I, I think Corey Seager really just finally put the stamp on who he is now. And I think if he can just have a healthy end to his career, I think he's a Hall of Famer. Um, that's just how highly I, I think of Corey Seager. Dude, he so had a 111 OPS moment. in the World Series. Or I think it was yeah, just the World Series alone, he had a 11 uh, OPS. And he was just clutch. He was just there. Every single fucking time they needed him, he delivered. Um, the other two moments is, of course, I think Acuna making history, holding the base in the air. I think that was really cool to see because, like I said, it's always good to see a player live up to the potential that we had them at. Like, like everyone would say, oh, my God, Acuna has the potential for video game numbers. The first to do this, the first to do that. So I'm glad, you know, Acuna lived up to that this year. And then third is there was a day with a doubleheader, Shohei Otani, where oh, he yeah. pitches a one-hit, nine-game shutout. And then later in that evening, hits two home runs. So, yeah, that's nuts. That's another MVP. Wow, both of them are MVPs. Yeah. <laughs> All three of them are MVPs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, there, there was some exciting baseball this year for sure. Uh, I think the best one is Domingo Herman's uh, no-hitter. No, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think it was a perfect game, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah perfect yeah. game yo that's crazy uh we gotta we gotta look it up wait no 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 because i think philip humber was was another one i say guys that got released after the season where they had their their no their uh perfect game that's a really good that's a really good one to think about i think philip humber was the one he got released mid-season like it was like five starts after his his perfect game I mean, technically, Tyler McGill for the Mets last year was part of a no-hitter, and he was, like, up and down all year. So, like, it, I mean, he was only did it for five innings. It was a combined, but still, like, if you're thinking about it in that aspect, too. <laughs> like, that's got to suck, it's, man. You know, Domingo <laughs> Herman literally threw a perfect game, got drunk, ruined his whole life, and then got released. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Dude, and he was so up and down this whole season. Like it was like he had games where it's like, wow, like there's why we have him. And then there's games he. But this season was dramatic, man. We had a lot of shit like that, like fucking Urias going down mid season. I was gonna say, if Um, anything, I guess one of my favorite moments would be like the last month because, dude, that playoff race came down to the wire at the end. Like there was a couple teams that just snuck in through the wild card. Dude, the Marlins making it was nuts. Dude, Miami or the the. Not Miami, you just threw me off. The Mar uh, Mariners, they blew it at the end too. That was exciting. Yeah. It was a battle between the division with Astros and Rangers all year. We didn't know if the Diamondbacks were gonna make it. It was a really interesting like finish to uh to the season. I'll say that. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Now, what is your worst moment of the season? Now, me, I got Wander Franco. I think like you could see the death of a franchise right on one small little thing happening, man. Yep. Yep. Like, the Rays, like, after they lost Wander Franco for the rest of the year, they went, like, 500 for the rest of the year after that. Yep. Um, you get, you knew they weren't going to do anything in the playoffs. You know they don't have any spark to them now. I think that sucks. I think they got to rebuild. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, dude. Because, like, they, they, they threw all their money into this guy. <laughs> dude, they'll never give out a big contract again like that, especially earlier in their, like, a career, uh, player's career. Like, that that was it, Rays fans. Like I know Rays it. fans were, like, like when he got that contract, they're like, yeah, we're paying players now. We got Franco yep. for several years. And then they see this, and they're like, oh, 
fucking yeah. hell. <laughs> you know their owner was just like, why? Like, this is why I didn't do it. Like, He's like, I he, told you, Steve. I told yeah. you I didn't want to hand out that contract. Uh, I'm never doing it again. Like, that was it. You had your one and done. You blew it. Uh, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I, Dude, there was a... Well, I mean... Urias too. That was a bad one too. But yeah, Franco. He was like a face of a franchise for them. And like with the contract, man, that was definitely one of the worst parts of this season. He, um, yeah, that was that was crazy. And then the other one is Otani going down for me. Um, yeah, I mean, because it's just like the Angels season in general was a very sad one. Like I would I would hate myself if I was an Angels fans. How how these last couple years have gone, especially this year, where they traded for a bunch of guys, and then after Otani goes down, they released a bunch of guys. <laughs> Um, traded literally every person that you got, you let go. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Um, that was, it was and, rough for them. Yeah, and was, I, I guess their sad. whole season was rough, it seems like. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about it from like just the Mets and Yankees point, because it's kind of like intertwined because our season's oh, didn't wow, end up yeah. with the playoffs. My, for the Mets, it started off with two things. The biggest blow for me was the Edwin Diaz thing. That was just like, holy crap, we just lost our like best That was right in the, the beginning of the year, too. Yeah, and then recently, or I guess... I wanted one more year of... Da, 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 Dude, I know. Bro, we gave him the contract, like, one of the, if not the best closer in baseball at the time. Like, bro, we were so screwed without him because we added a couple pieces to the bullpen, but he was such a main guy that we needed that I it agree. hurt. Robertson stepped up pretty good, though. I'll give him credit for that, but it was still, like, that's a blow that you're not getting back. Uh, it started off too crappy with moments like Verlander not pitching in the beginning, Scherzer having some problems, but the real big blow to me for this season was when we started trading David Robertson and other guys because I knew for a fact that, all right, it's over. Like, there wasn't, like, we were selling off. Yeah. Like, I'm not mad we and sold off. it's crazy because the it, Mets, like, if they opted to try to get better, they might have made the wild card because it, like, exactly. it came down. It was pretty close. Like, I could have seen, like, any team making a run to make that. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I do think they could have made a run. I'm okay though that we sold off because we bit the bullet. Right, right. But as a base, when you're a, when your team sells off, you're just like, all right, season's over. Like you kind of listen, know, man, because like, it's like listen, like <laughs> as a Nationals fan, you know, getting rid of like Juan Soto and shit, like you knew it had to happen. Yeah, you like the ret- you like the return, but it just fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you know, it's just. The nails in the coffin there. And yeah. to your Yankee jersey, I'll bring it for the Yankee fans. I think they had a couple <laughs> this season, too. The first one, Yo. obviously, was Judge. Judge getting yeah, his horrible toe hit again. Season. Oh, my gosh, horrible bro. Season. They the, gave him a contract, hits the concrete at Dodger Stadium. I mean, he was out. They were out. It was over. And then I'll even cap off with the Yankee fan. I think this has got to be one of the moments of the season, too, that they want to not revisit. Uh, uh Jason Dominguez going down at the end of the year with what it was it was Tommy John I think it was he's out yeah. until like July of next year I know he's coming back but seeing that prospect that you were waiting for I didn't even know if the Yankees were going to bring him up this year they did he goes off and then he might not even play next injury. year because like they said they're not rushing him at all like they're not going to do like the bright what Bryce Harper did yep. not even going to chance it like they want him to have a full recovery but a part that I would I would like to bring up about the Yankees is just Carlos Rodon. Oh, bro, I, I was think, about to say that that one game, and I, no I outs, think it nine runs. Off, like his the last game of his like Yankee like not Yankee career, but like the last game of last year was him giving up like what was it, like six runs in like a third of an inning pitch. Yeah, I dude, I think um, it was nine and no outs. It was something like yeah. historic. I, that sucks. But like that, my thing is like this is why Cashman probably should be fired is because like. Of everything you could have traded for last year, of everything that you could have done in free agency, you supplied Aaron Judge still with no team around him to where, like, Aaron Judge played hurt the whole year because he had to come back. Because he had one of those weird sports injuries. Like, we get it. It's a toe. But, like, it was the way it was broken was, like, it just fucked with his leg and everything. Yep. Um, like that. But, like, Carlos Rodon, like, had, like, you know who Carlos Rodon is at the end of the day. He's an injury-prone like hothead and up and yeah, down. granted he had a good year last year for the giants and the one before that with the white Sox. but hey, dude his injury history was so prevalent you knew what you were getting with him yeah and, just, and it, how do you not get justin verlander in that yeah like dude, how do you <laughs> even scherzer like i know he wasn't the best this scherzer year. i like i i but, i've already i told you wolf like when the mets signed him i was like don't be a lot of people hated me for it but i was like don't be too happy for max he dies at the end of every season now, but like Justin Verlander is just like 
I'll say this: Imagine I would have took him Garrett over. Cole again. Yeah, I would have took uh, him over Rodon though. That's my, basically my only point because his first yeah. year with the Mets he wasn't bad. But yeah, Verlander was there. Even a shot at Bellinger was there. And the one thing I cannot defend Cashman on before he goes, oh well, we tried this that. Bro, look at the trades the last few years. Montgomery for Bader. Montgomery was a good pitcher, and you still needed pitching. Bader, you don't even have on the team anymore. I defended then, that, too. <laughs> dude, and then the Montas trade, and then there's some talks about him coming back again this year. He didn't even pitch, like, at all, basically, for them. The I Gallo he twice since get, since that trade. Yeah, yeah. Uh, getting but I Gallo. like who Montas is, though. It's just like, damn, it's just like the moment he went to New York, it was over. But the thing is, too, is, like, would uh, I didn't see the – difference of him and Montgomery being worth the trade pieces. I feel yeah. like, what was that? It was like a, such a weird swap. Um, the the Gary Sanchez trade just to get rid of him, even though he's actually did alright with the Padres. Giving up Gio Urshela I thought was silly for Donaldson's contract. You're bringing in another aging player with a lot of money. Uh, I, I mean, the list goes on. We could go on all day with the recent like five yeah. years of trades that didn't go well for him. So that's why I can't even just defend the... Like, Everybody's saying, like, the oh, just spend money thing because, dude, it's it's also the trades aspect, and that has not been good recently. I mean, we'll see, man. I mean, we're going to have a, we're gonna have the whole offseason to talk about how they, you know, rebound and shit. You know, we'll see how they do. We'll see what the Mets do. I think the Mets, for whatever reason, you know, they look a little healthy. I'm not going to lie. They look like, you know, they're, they're primed for a couple of big signings and get right back to it. But... Um, what did you What did you learn most from the season? I mean, for me, I learned that Rob Manfred is a dog. Um, <laughs> Ooh, you know, boy. again, like I'll I'll say it all the time, man. I think he's done great. Like I love that the games are shorter. I love that there's universal DH. I love this playoff format. Like everything that he's doing is turning to gold. And the last, like I think his last mission is to fix this umpire bullshit. Um, because that's the second thing is like ump's gotta go, man. I mean, they got to get younger or they got to go. Like, whatever's going on right now is just not good. Like, we should not be seeing, like, umpires that are missing 10-plus calls a game. Like, we, we shouldn't. Like, these motherfuckers, they train their whole lives for this. I don't even know what the first step is to becoming an umpire on the Major League Baseball level, but, like, whatever you know, the process someone who knows is, someone it who is knows fucked. <laughs> yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And, and I also look at it in terms of baseball as a whole is that – Dude, there's not players that are playing past the age of 40 nowadays because the game's so quick and so, like, pitches are so fast. So when you have guys in their, like, their 70s that are still, like, calling games and stuff. How are they accurately seeing a pitch that's, like, one second to the play? (laughs) Dude, there's no way they are. Um, That being said, the only thing I would like to see is a change of umpiring to a younger generation rather than get rid of the umpire. Because I don't want to necessarily see a robot ump. But I also think they need to start sprinkling in some more different replay rules where it's like, if it's a cold third strike in a super pivotal game and it ends the inning, why the hell is that not allowed to be replayed? Like, that's bullcrap. Like, I, I, I don't want it to where they could do it at every pitch, but there's got to be some moments where pivotal plays can be replayed. Or I reviewed. would say, like, you get you get just one replay shot at a pitch. Yeah, that works. I think. Yeah, or yeah. and do it like that, and then maybe like you get one more if you get it right. But that's like twos in them. No, I think like that should be like you should get two replay flags. You get one for the regular shit, and then one for any pitch throughout the game. But once you use it, that's yeah, it. it, honestly, and I'd be good with that because if it is just that one pivotal pitch, okay, that's fine. We're cooking, then. Wolfie, put us in office. <laughs> Seriously, like, and, and it keeps everybody happy because then there's the, still the umpiring at least for now, and then uh, but at least there's some other aspect yeah. to it because. Ah, just and the I, robot ump one. Yeah, then it also takes away last... arguing and stuff like that, and that's also right. kind of a fun thing. And the la- last thing that I learned from the season was just, like, baseball's in good hands, man. Like, all the young players that thrive this year, I love. I love me some Corbin Carroll. love me some Gunnar oh, Henderson. Yeah. Um, you know, the Rangers rookies, you know, Evan Carter and Josh Jung did their fucking thing in the postseason. Um, I-, I love it all around, and the Nationals have a nice young team coming up, too. Um, so yeah, I, I love all the young young talents coming up. I think we're in some great hands, especially because Acuna is still really young. He just won MVP. Um, so we're we're good. and Soto's yet to be twenty five, I believe. So yeah, we're, that's we're a good, good point man. because not even just with the teams that brought him up and were good, like the Rangers and the Orioles, but then you look at the teams like 
you know, Bobby Miller for the Dodgers came up, Hunter Brown for the Astros, a bunch of Met prospects finally got called up. We saw some Pirate prospects. The, the Reds, Reds almost went to the World not the World Series, but they almost <laughs> went to the playoffs. Yeah. Based on their fucking people. Yep. And a lot of these teams didn't hesitate recently to bring up their rookies, which is good to see. Like even Bobby Witt came up fairly quick within the last couple of years. Like he wasn't in the minors. Like teams are finally starting to the Yankees with Dominguez, I know he got hurt, but dude, there was no one thought he was coming up this year. It Bro, was like, like I'm glad to see gave, it. like he gave the Yankees fans something to be excited about. Exactly. And I'm I hope it's something going forward that a lot more teams are going to keep doing cuz I'd rather just see these rookies play than just have them sit in the minor for 6 years plus. It's just like come on, like give them a shot. Cuz you can clearly I see agree. that what happens when you do. So uh just to give you mine quick though because it's kind of just, you know, good with yours. Uh number 3, just get in. Obviously, just get into the playoffs because we could see what that means. And some people might not like that, but if you're good enough to get in the playoffs, you're good. Like, I don't want to hear any argument. You're in the playoffs. You know, everybody hyped up the Phillies this year. They had 87 wins. The Diamondbacks had 84 wins. We're talking about three games. That could have just been three games part of a doubleheader. Most people don't sweep a doubleheader. There's your three games. Yeah. It's like it wasn't that far of a difference. And like you said, they were doing good throughout the year to begin with. And they beat these teams to get to the World Series. So I don't want to hear this, like, whole, oh, they got lucky with the format. No, they played, they got in. Um, the next thing is don't underestimate teams. Not and This kind of almost ties with the just get in because, dude, there was a, like, no one was picking the Orioles. No one was picking the Rangers. Uh, the Cubs did a lot better than a lot of people expected. Uh, the Mets fell off the table. Like, don't overestimate and don't underestimate teams because, like, any sport, anything can happen. Just... Let the game ride out. Agreed. Um, and the top one is actually injuries to top players might not necessarily derail your season anymore as much as we think it would. Because look at the Rangers. We already mentioned that they lost a lot of starting pitching. Yo, and they still came through and won the World Jacob Series. Jacob DeGrom. And I want to make a good point real quick because I meant to make it um, during the Rangers World Series segment. I got to say, man. People say that Jacob DeGrom was pretty irrelevant to the whole season. I disagree because Jacob DeGrom pitched six games. And you know what happened in those six games? The Rangers won every single game that he pitched. There you go. Sorry, Mets fans. But um, <laughs> those six wins, believe it or not, let's say they go three and three. They don't win the division. Or they, yeah. they, don't, they don't make the playoffs. Like yeah. if, if, and, and that's my point. Jacob DeGrom. Yep. I'll give him credit for that. Yeah, like when they are there, they're important. But uh, even with the Braves, like they were years they didn't have Acuna and they still got to the playoffs and did well. Now World they series. have him and they weren't even past the first round. Uh, the Yankees, as much as I <laughs> will admit they needed Judge throughout the year, when they actually got him back, they actually played worse than when in the beginning of the year. Like it wasn't necessarily like, oh, he's back, he's there. So my point is, like, injuries can derail a team, but not necessarily. There are a lot of examples of just because your top guy or a top guy in your team goes down, you could still keep fighting. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. So a quick pivot. Top five short stops of all time. So you went first on your overrated players. I'm gonna go first here on my top five short stops of all time. First off you know, I'm gonna go Cal Ripken at number five. All right. You know, I don't right. think you can have I don't think you can have this list without Cal. Um, you know, he was the Iron Man of our sport. You know, played so many so many games in a row. Um, there's a lot of conspiracies about it, uh, but he played so many goddamn games in a row. Um, and it's not like he was a slouch of a player either. Ended up with 400 home runs, two MVPs, 3,000 hits. Um, so he was both an Iron Man and he was both really fucking good. He was good with the glove, good with the bat. You can't not name him here. Number four, I'm going Ernie Banks, right? Good old Ernie. Um, when I, when I think of the Cubs back in the day, I only think of Ernie Banks. Um, you know, 500 home runs from a shortstop was pretty unreal back, <laughs> back then. Yeah. He won back to back is. MVPs. Um, you know, Ernie Banks was the fucking guy, man. Like, like his best season I'm looking at here, 47 home runs, 129 RBIs, you know, 193 hits. Um, you know, he won, he did win one gold glove in his career as well. So it's not like he was a, a slouch with the glove. Um, number three, I'm going number two, Derek Jeter. So listen, oh, damn. You know, anyone could say what they want. Derek Jeter was fucking phenomenal. One of the best shortstops of all time. 
I mean, you think of him as a leader, the way he was able to lead those Yankee teams that had a lot of star talent on them. He was able to lead those teams. He wasn't that great with the glove, but, you know, he, he got the job done. He has a signature throw, um, but mostly it's his stats as a hitter, man. Like, a lot of people will call him overrated. I don't think so because you can't deny the fact that he had 3,465 hits. We're not just talking about he barely got over the 3,000 mark. He was in, like, almost 3.5K hits. Um, you know, he still had 260 home runs. Um, he several top five MVP finishes. So um, he did end up with gold gloves. I mean, whatever you can say, like, you know, overrated. But he won some gold gloves, man. And there wasn't a lot of debate to it. There wasn't people that were, from what I remember, there wasn't big controversial debates about whether he should have gotten the gold glove or not. Um, but the biggest thing is fucking postseason. The Yankees won five, five, five rings with him. And overall, he hit 308. As, as many appearances they had, 158 playoff games, which is almost a whole season. That's he hit crazy. 308 with 200 <laughs> hits, bro. 200 wow. hits in the playoffs. Dude, so, almost a full season of playoff ball. That's unheard of. <laughs> right. Like, it, it's fucking crazy. And he walks away with five rings. Um, I, I think that his ability to put, a, put aside his beef with Alex Rodriguez was really fucking big, too. Um, cause you know, they could have easily just beefed and not won anything at all. Number two, you got to put Honus Wagner here. Like you got, you got to put him on the list. I mean, he was the guy, the, you know, he was the, the prototypical shortstop. He was the baseball card. I don't have much else to say because I don't like to dig into stats when it's from all the way back in the day, but I had to put him here. Why? Because who's my number one? Oh. Alex Rodriguez is my I knew best it was shortstop. coming. I kept waiting for his name, and I didn't hear it. I'm like, oh, God, if this dude does it. Oh, my Lord. Uh, the evil empire, the Darth Vader of baseball. I got Alex Rodriguez, man. This dude was, you want to talk about on top of his game hitting and, and on top of his game of fielding. This guy was a fucking force, man. I mean... Granted, he played third base once he got to the Yankees, but before that, you're talking about a guy that can hit 50 home runs, give you 130 or 140 RBIs, steal bases, lead the league in total bases, play every single game in the year, win MVPs, and he just did his fucking thing, man. A lot of people like to point out that he wasn't the best postseason hitter. Um, he still hit 259. He still hit some home runs in there. Obviously, he wasn't as good as he as he was during the regular season. But man, Alex fucking Rodriguez is my best shortstop of all time. Oh my again, gosh. great fielder. He might be one of the best fielding shortstops of all time as well. Um, and that's another shout out to him for being able to go over to third base. Um, to let Derek Jeter play shortstop because where else was Derek Jeter gonna play? Um, yeah, that's a good point. So, yeah, that's my top five. <laughs> oh, you just you lost me at number one. I just I I I'll say this: great baseball player for what he did. It's the fact that he also you know the PEDs and moving to third. I love the PEDs, man. That's the only reason I'm negating <laughs> for it for Alex my Rodriguez, list because I love him. Because I'm looking about like if all the other guys on this list did PEDs, like we could be talking about a different game too. So that's why I, I gotta like keep that separate from my list uh but my list is actually almost identical to yours except for one guy because i took off a rod i put honus number one i mean dude we don't even need to go into it his stats are ridiculous i don't yeah. give a crap what time period he played in i know you'd be like well what about the pud things a different time period that's you know we're talking about something else that's an enhancement uh Dude, his career war is a 131. No, they, did they did not crack, but, you know. Greenies, I know, I know. Opium yeah. and... <laughs> Hot dogs. <laughs> so, but uh, Honus Wagner, dude, his career war is a 131. Like, that's insanity. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Yeah. Played every position, great stats. I mean, obviously the none of us were around card, to see man. him. Yeah, so I, he's classic. I'll do number one for him. Uh, number two was hard for me. Because, and I'm actually going top to bottom, but whatever. Uh, I thought it could have been, I was originally going to say Ernie Banks. 
It actually might be Cal for me because of his war as well. I keep, I'm not a big war guy, but I keep bringing it up. He had almost 100 war. <laughs> it was like nine, 94, 96 or something like that. I was going like to ask, that. wow, Wolfie, you are, you are hinging on that war stuff Yeah, today. bro. I mean, if everybody else is using it nowadays, I got to you know get with the times. Uh, right. Dude, playing every day, good ball player, long, like, longevity of his career, like he was really good i would interchange him and ernie banks could be a two or three to me ernie banks like you said dude the amount of home runs he hit even nowadays as a shortstop is like unheard of like that's crazy crazy numbers like dude was a dog I like I, I think one of the best players not just shortstop um number four for me jeter i mean we don't need to go into it again obviously like i'm not and there is no jeter slander on this podcast like i don't want to hear the overrated we're, we're jeter fans um Number five, this one was hard for me because I originally was going to take Barry Larkin because, and I, like, he's an interchangeable one too because I was going to do Ozzie Smith and I, and I still have him as my five because of his war and defense as well. But dude, like, if you look at his hitting stats, he has like a career, I think it's 666 OPS, Ozzie Smith. Like he had some really, really low hitting numbers. And Barry right. Larkins is, like, almost in the 800s. So, like, I feel like those could be interchangeable. Uh, honorable Tatis. mention to Robin Yelp and uh, Jimmy Rollins. <laughs> Jimmy Rollins actually had some crazy numbers, too, for, like, a good stretch. But uh, but I would have to say those definitely got to be the top five. You could throw an A-Rod in there if you're an A-Rod fan. But uh, there's no <laughs> denying that those are the top dogs right there. Absolutely, man. So let's, let's pivot into... Um, some off-season free agency talk, man. Why don't you Why don't you lead us off? Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of interesting guys out there still left. Uh, Jordan Montgomery, obviously Otani. Um, the Soto trade could happen. It's not the most stacked um, a Bellinger. It's not the most stacked hitting market we have right now. Um, but I think there's a lot of room for teams to improve. Uh, the The one thing that I'm curious about, though. Is the like Otani thing like who's actually biting on that? Like we're gonna talk. If you look at his pitching stats, they're comparable. Say like a Garrett Cole season. If you look at his hitting stats, it's like a Judge season. Both of those guys alone are getting thirty-five mil. If he could do both, we're talking about a fifty, sixty, seventy million dollar player, if not more. Whoever gets him, that is gonna just change the whole market. I think like if a team like the Dodgers get him, I don't understand how they're not gonna win the World Series if he's healthy. Like, there, that is an yeah. interesting, I mean, you know, thing I'm, going on. I'm on the other side of the fence here when it comes to Otani, and it's not me being a hater. It's not me hating the talent. I just, it's kind of going as I predicted it would. Like, I don't think, like, because he's going to have Tommy John again. You know, this is I, this is his second time having Tommy John, right? I think this might even, I know at least two. I know he's gotten, right. I don't think it's three, but at least two. So, you know, this being a second time with Tommy John, I mean, it's such an awkward thing. And I know a lot of teams in the front office are probably arguing about this, too. Because, um, like, as a, like, if I'm a fan of a team, I'm not mad if I don't sign Otani. But I'm not mad if we do sign Otani because you know the potential of what he can be is there. I think as an athlete, as good as he is, he should recover and come back and pitch again. But do you want that? Do you want, like, every couple of years he goes down because of how much stress is on him and his arm? I don't know. I don't know if I could shell out my whole, almost my entire payroll for Shohei Otani. Like, we're talking about paying this guy 50, 60, 70 million dollars a year. Whatever the bidding war gets to, shit, he might even get 80 million dollars a year. Um, But, you know, that's based, that's a lot of these teams' payrolls. Dude, like, and, and like you said, you, there's no guarantee he's pitching. Like for me that's personally, what I'm saying. Like, as a he Met could get fan, this contract and then be totally comfy and be like, okay, I'm just going to be a hitter for the rest of my career. Um, and I don't know. I just, like I said, I'm happy if my team isn't in the running. I'm happy if they are. He's Shohei Otani. But I think the, these things got to be of concern because if you're going to pay him like a two-way athlete, you got to consider that pitching side. Yeah, have to. I think there should be some sort of stipulation to where if like he doesn't pitch, he doesn't get like a certain amount of money. I doubt he would ever accept <laughs> something 200 like mil. that. Yeah, well, it's it's true. It's like yo, if you get like I'll give you a three hundred fifty million dollar contract for hitting, and I'll give you another, you know, whatever how many th- another thirty a year if you pitch well. You don't even have to pitch well, just pitch. 
But yeah. like, if you don't, I feel like you shouldn't get that kind of money. like. That's why, like, if I'm a Met, like Steve Cohen, I know people say oh, it's not your money, it's not your money, bro. Like, if I don't know that, I would much rather do the route that I think the Mets are gonna do. I hope we go after Yamamoto. I would much rather yeah. have Yamamoto just pay him for the position that we know that he can play and just call it a day in that department. I mean, obviously, Kevin I want to see some more bats. Be a disgusting one too, man. Yeah, dude, and I personally think that. Like, if we were to get a chance of Otani or Soto, I would much rather have Soto, to be honest. Um, I don't want to give up the prospects, because I feel like that negates what we just did last Juan season. Juan Soto might change a whole fucking team's outlook where he, wherever he gets traded, because I, I don't buy into these Padres years at all. I hope no, he gets I know. traded. I and know. this is the thing, man. I know the worry for Mets fans or Yankees fans or whatever is that, like, he won't resign. Juan Soto wants to be in New York. That I think this is a clear thing that when he was in Washington, every trip he would take to Mets Stadium, Yankee Stadium, he was soaking it in, taking pictures, enjoying his time. Like he loves New York. He would absolutely Good. resign in New York. And I, I that's what I'm saying. Like if Mets fans get him, I'm gonna be pretty upset. I'm gonna have to get a Juan Soto Mets jersey, but it is what it, I got the Lindor jersey for a reason. I loved Lindor. Um, but anyway, back to your point with Yamamoto. Yeah, I, I think the teams that are going for Yamamoto are going to win by going for that risk. But also, like, Otani, imagine him in Boston, whether he pitches or not. Like, I, I see if, if Boston gets Otani, I think Otani wants to go there because Yoshida's there. He said he loves Boston. I think he knows that he can hit either that, that, short, that short porch in right or the very big wall in left. I think he'd have a fucking blast in that park and it's the red sox the fans are passionate um he would be on teams that would win because granted the last couple of years haven't gone the way boston wants to but they're always going to feel the team that could win because if not their fans would fucking riot like the yankees fans would <laughs> um so I, I i would love to see otani in boston or pittsburgh but pittsburgh isn't gonna they're they're not gonna do what i want them to do no you're right and and just with the otani aspect in general while the there's always the talk about the Dodgers getting him, if you're the Dodgers though, like is it really the smart move to do? Because think about it, like your offense is stacked with Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman. You know you got Will Smith there. You got a bunch of other guys. Your main main problem last year was pitching. Was pitching. And if he's not gonna pitch, or even not this year alone, like are we really gonna commit that much money to like a spot that you necessarily don't need? That like you you need pitching. Like yeah. I wouldn't. I would think almost right. Yamamoto makes more sense for them. Oh, yeah, and I absolutely agree. But, like, come on, it's the Dodgers, bro. <laughs> I guess they just made of money, I guess. Like, yeah, they'll they they'll get the Shohei win. and they'll get a couple of pitchers. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I know. It's stupid. Like, it really it. is. They just get everybody. Fuck it, right? Um, yeah, I mean, th those are, like, the brunt of the free agents. I mean, I, I think a lot, I, you know, I, I mean, I think the trade targets are a little bit more important because you got... You know, Shane Bieber, um, you got, what's his name on the Brewers? Um, fuck. Uh, oh, Corbin Burns. Burns. Corbin Burns. You have the entire um, White Sox roster. Yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> Luis Robert. That's a thing. I feel like these teams should be simping for Luis Robert. I mean, I know that Eloy Jimenez is getting a lot of looks, but Luis Robert I would be sending a lot for. Like, if the Nationals were to trade, like, a couple of top prospects... And some other shit for him, I would not be mad at all. Like, Luis Robert, I promise you, mark my words, is going to be, like, a top player in baseball for the next, like, 10-plus years. That's how much I believe in Luis Robert. And I hope to God some team takes him away from Chicago. Because if he stays in Chicago, I don't think he'll be a top anything in, in, in his career. No, uh, but no, everybody once he to moves to a that. healthier franchise that he can, like, work with an actual hitting coach... Um, and be a little bit more consistent and more healthy. I love Luis Robert, but this Juan Soto thing I think is going to change MLB. I think Juan Soto immediately, like, he goes to a team and they're immediately going to have one of the best offenses. I don't care if he's thrown on, I don't know, if he's if he's thrown back to the Nationals, fuck it. I don't, I don't fucking care. Like, we'll be <laughs> one of the best offenses again. I don't care. <laughs> no, you're right. Dude, he's, like, instantly makes the team better, and there's so many teams that could, like, use him tomorrow. Like, the, as much as I hate Literally, to see him tomorrow. go there, bro, the Yankees. <laughs> if he was on the Yankees back-to-back -back with Judge, like, you 
instantly, instantly improve that team. It's not even a question. That's what I'm saying for the I think for the the Yankees it has to be a no brainer. Like you you've pussyfooted your way through the last couple of years. <laughs> this is something you should be aggressive on and get it done. It should be the top priority. Cause I mean if you're expecting Rodon to come back, then like they're I don't think they're gonna be in the market for a big pitcher if it's not Yamamoto. But when it comes to the Yankees, you throw Juan Soto into that lineup. It's like you said, Aaron Judge. Man, like Juan Soto and Aaron Judge, the duo. That would be crazy. Cra- and then you think about how it would affect Stanton. Like Stanton would get better pitches to see. He wouldn't be striking out so much. Might be more motivated now that he's going to be playing for a team that could absolutely win the whole thing. Um, yeah, the Yankees, it, if they don't get Juan Soto or like Shohei or Yamamoto or Bellinger, something like that, I don't. I'm I'm good on the Yankees, man. Yeah, they they absolutely need to get like a big bat. Specifically, I would like to see them get another lefty into their lineup because they're also one of those teams where like Soto, like I'm not even worried about the contract stuff necessarily because like you said, like if if a team throws money at him, he's going to stay. But I also right. think it makes more sense for a team that's close. Like I don't think like it even with the Mets, like I want them on the Mets, but I'm trying to think of like a like a mid level team, like the Cardinals maybe, even the uh, even the Giants. I would kind of say are in that mix where it's like he's would really help that team. I don't think it's enough. A team like if the Cubs had Bellinger still, which just hypothetical. Say they sign Bellinger and they trade for Soto, that is a team that I think could really benefit from having. Oh, him. Yeah. The Yankees are my top choice though. Like they need like if, if there's and anything, they yo, want Soto. Time. With that right field, <laughs> oh my! That gosh. right field porch, he's gonna start hitting fifty home runs in like a year. Like this yeah. is insane. And the thing about him too is that it his game is different from a lot of these other power hitters, where he'll still get you the on base percentage yep. and he'll still hit for a decent average. He'll still, like, the he would. Uh, like, Stan's dude. not doing that. <laughs> oh man, Juan Soto on the Yankees sounds nuts, dude. Yeah. Oh, um, sign me up, man. I'll get a fucking pinstripe Juan Soto jersey ASAP. Dude, it's so true. Everything they need, like, he brings to that table. Like, they don't even need the power, which he brings, but it's everything else that he does. Plus, he actually can play defense. <laughs> yeah. Or, like, actually Gla- get in the field. <laughs> Bro, they keep Glaber. They keep, like, their, their two young guys, Peraza and... Um, uh, Ca- well, Cabrera, Peraza, Dominguez, uh, Vol- yeah, uh, Volpe is still there. Um, and I'm you got to remember, it. too, bro, like, the one thing I will defend the Yankees on, too, uh, with, I mean, I'm not going to defend them because, obviously, their staff uh, misdiagnosed it. Anthony Rizzo was having a solid season. Then, all of a sudden, he got injured and came back, and for a couple months, he was off, and all of a sudden, they pulled him back out because they misdiagnosed that he actually had a concussion this whole time, and he was getting bad headaches. So, I look at it like if he didn't have that, or if he even just got it... D- diagnosed right the first time he actually was having a good season like, a really good season like, I like one of the top seasons he's had in a while so i they I tap the pieces agree. there still which is why i think they need to do more yeah i absolutely agree now what what team do you think absolutely needs to rebuild and i'll say besides the white Sox. okay i was gonna say that was actually one of the first <laughs> ones i took uh i mean my my first thing is i'll i mean i'll say i've said it on so many episodes i think the angels got to do it man they, yeah that was my next one <laughs> like i don't i don't care like the, apparently they're trying to still compete like they got ron washington and damn it it breaks my heart because you just love you, you love ron washington right and now he's entering the bullshit los angeles angels i'm glad it wasn't buck i've i feel like um, I feel like Buck Showalter should go to a team that he'll actually have a chance to win with. Um, that's what I would love for Buck. Like I thought it was going to be the Mets. I, th- I really thought the Mets, once they got Buck Showalter in there, got everything that they got, I thought it was a done deal. Mets were going to win a World Series within the next five. But We got rid know, of it quick. I, I think it's the Angels, man. They got to trade Trout. They got to really restart. Get rid of all the negative nastiness because at the end of the day, the Angels, they have a good logo. They have good jerseys. Their stadium is fucking... It looks amazing. I've never been there. Um, there's a they lot of mixed money. reviews on it. But, like, you know, you got money to spend. You're Los Angeles. Like, let's make this team healthy, man. Like, let's just get rid of everybody. Make it bare bones. Win, like, 30... Go 30 and 132 next year. <laughs> Whatever it is, just let's... Let's fucking refresh. I completely agree with that. The Angels... White Sox were my choice to be the Angels for the backup one. Um, and it, what's actually pretty interesting is if you look around baseball, specifically in the National League, the teams that should rebuild are already rebuilding, or at least trying to. And right. in the AL, it's kind of the same way. Like, 
I don't know if the Royals are necessarily taking stronger steps to rebuild, but but like I said, they're already pretty much at the bottom, so they can't rebuild from nothing. But the Angels have been trying, the White Sox have been trying, and it just hasn't been working. Especially with the White Sox, while you at least still own some of the pieces, get rid of them, bro. Like, what are you doing? Like, you've got to get rid of them now. Like, right now. You already did it with Giolito. You did it with a couple other guys. I, you got to keep advancing with that. And the Angels, too, I still think they screwed up with not trading Otani at the deadline. That was, like, you shot yourself in the foot. You didn't even keep the guys that you did trade for. Like, it's just... It's it's ridiculous, honestly. Like how they they, they have to change their philosophy because clearly it's not working, especially in that division where everybody else is getting stronger. <laughs> Whatever's going on, they gotta they gotta end that. Yeah. Now, what team do you what team do you think should go all in? What do you, what team do you think has to absolutely put all their chips in this year? And I know we mentioned the Yankees, so let's mention a different team. Yeah, uh, so I would say actually it's going to be Toronto is my uh, pick. And the reason why I say Toronto is because for these last few years, they've been, like, right at the cusp of being, like, super, super good. And every year we always think they're going to be really good. And a lot of these guys they have have been around now for a few years. Like, if you ain't winning with them, they're not going to want to stay here or eventually they might not want to resign there. I I know they've tried with Springer. They've tried it with uh, Gosman. There's just a lot more they need to do to improve that team. You know what's crazy? They're getting a lot of calls for Vladdy and Bo Bichette. I heard that. I heard Boba Shet's not too happy there anymore, which is like I said, if they don't do it in the next year, I don't even think. I think they should trade Bichette. Too. I think they should trade Bichette and continue to build. Like they might even doing. be a rebuilding team now that I'm thinking about it. If they don't go all in, they they have. They're at the point where if they don't have another choice. You either go all in or you start to rebuild because just being in the stagnant state that you're in with the talent that you have, like you got to get better eventually. I think, like, the main thing that it comes around is, like, they they need, like, Bo Bichette and Vlad to enter, like, a different atmosphere. Like, we get it. They're great players, great baseball players. Statistically, they put up decent seasons, but they don't they don't need decent anymore. They need, like, they need Vladdy at, like, 40, 50 home runs, mashing the fuck out of the baseball. They need Bo Bichette getting 200 hits and, you know, absolutely torching. But they're not getting that. They're not getting a mot- mot- motivation out of those two. And I would say if they're going to rebuild, do it now because they can get so much for everything that they have. Um, but if they're not going to rebuild, trade trade Bichette and let's let's see what happens. Get they have a more lot they could trade. A lot oh, yeah. of pieces between bats. Like, I feel like pitching. a team a team would give up a lot for George Springer. Yeah, I mean, like he's have, still, you know, he's you see that they're trying to shop Manoa. Like I've heard that in a couple reports. Like what is that? Like why do they think he has value now? Like I you don't know. Well, I think because Manoa sorry. wants to go, because like Manoa says, like, oh, you know, he was injured, and then like, you know, they didn't really handle it properly, and then they just sent him down to AAA out of nowhere when he was improving, when he got back to the majors. Because I agree. I mean, I think he had a couple of decent starts when he got back, and then out of nowhere they were just like, no, fuck this experiment, it's done, <laughs> go down. <laughs> don't get me wrong, a team will take him, but I just find it funny like the way they're like packaging him like it's some sort of like, m- like I know what I'm saying, piece. but that's what scares me because if imagine if a team like the Astros gets their hands on him. Well, that's the thing too. I actually do think <laughs> you're right though. He does need to clearly get out of there. As, at this point, you can't come back from that in the same team. Yeah, he's a he's a fucking great pitcher, man. He goes to a team that has like healthiness the to them and like good pitching, like coaches like that. Like I said, the Astros. Or Cardinals, yeah, like team like that. Milwaukee? Oh my god, Milwaukee seems Milwaukee. to be doing pretty good. Yeah, fuck Milwaukee. Staff. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, so real quick, um, shoot these out quick. Worst free agent signing of all time. Uh, I honestly have like just three quick ones. Uh, Crawford, Carl Crawford, dude. Once he got Ooh, his money, it was terrible. That one. It was so bad that the Sox actually traded him. He got a uh, seven years, one forty-two mil. They traded him after two years. Two years of a seven mil, <laughs> a seven year contract. Hey, I, I would say Pablo Sandoval won with the Red Sox was pa- worse. Potable Sandoval was actually like right next to them. Apparently the Red Damn, Sox are two just Red Sox some bad, bad ones. And one they actually missed out on, thank God for them, but it's another one of their players is I think the Jacoby Ellsbury uh signing was one of the worst okay. ones ever too, because I mean clearly that just didn't work now, out. There's a lot of ones in there, but those three stand so out I, to me. I have one. And it's actually fairly recent. Um, now, listen, man, like, all those players that you said, Carl Crawford, Pablo Sandoval, Jacoby Ellsbury, I would say they deserve their contracts with how they played beforehand. 
my the guy that I'm choosing is a guy that I still don't know why he got a big contract, and it's Javier Baez. I think oh, it's ter- I forgot about and him. It, yeah, and it's really not paying <laughs> dividends for them right now. Um, maybe he comes back next year when I, I think the Tigers are going to be a threat for the AL Central, and maybe he does better because they're winning again. But he was a player that like you saw he added nothing to the Mets. I, in in fact, they got worse after they traded for Javier Baez. Before that, how bad he did on the Cubs, it was not justified giving him that huge, huge deal. He probably should have still been a free agent to this day. He swings at everything. No matter where it is, you will see that bat fly off of his shoulder. Barely, like, he struggles to hit 200. I just just think it's the worst ever. Unless something changes, it has to be. I actually like, they benched him. him. So they benched him because <laughs> he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing out there. Yeah, he's 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 honestly like terrible. Like he's like one of the like worst players in the league with the way he at least in swing percentage of last year. It was it was yeah. terrible. All right, so best signing of all time. I'm going Max Scherzer, and the reason why I say that is, of course, I got Nationals bias on me. Um, but when it, when it comes to Max Scherzer, sign with the Nationals. The Nationals took a big risk in getting them. Kind of changes the, the franchise direction because, yeah, they just made the playoffs twice, but not really putting something together that you would call World Series worthy. He comes in. It's World Series worthy. He wins two Cy Youngs in his five and a half years there, or six and a half years there. Four, he had five top five finishes for Cy Young. Um, he catapults himself to being one of the best pitchers of all time as a national i think it was a big contract and it got big results and i think that's the best best contract in history you know what's crazy is that was actually one of the ones i chose to but i gave a backup <laughs> just in case uh yeah that was scherzer i looked at the stats and it's like you cannot deny it for what they did and what he brought for the team and just in general like he was one of the best pitchers in baseball and you got him that's always a win. Uh, yeah, it was like him, the other Verlander, one, Kershaw. Those yeah. three. And the one I'll actually take it, just given like flashing like 15 years fo- or before that, is actually Randy Johnson was a solid signing by the Arizona Diamondbacks, too. He's coming off of four, a World four Series. Cy Youngs, something like that. Yeah. It's like, yo, that's like, if you can get a pitcher that has multiple Cy Youngs on your team and then he performs just like that on your team, that's an instant win, in my opinion. He's one of the Like, best it was signings. an instant World Series. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. That's the craziest part. Yeah, it really was. So, like, in retrospect, yeah, that has to be one of the top ones for not only just his performance, but what he brought for the team in the postseason. Yeah, and we're we're going to – don't worry, guys. We're going to talk more offseason stuff um, as we go through here. So make sure, like I said again, make sure you guys like and subscribe because um, we, we're going to be talking offseason all offseason. Um, so, all right, we did top five most overrated players, Wolf. Give me the top five most underrated players. Yeah, so I'll, I'll quick run through this one. Uh, so we have a couple players on this list uh, that I didn't even realize they were as good as they were. I'll start from the bottom. Uh, let me just uh, Dwight Evans for the uh, Red so- or for the Red Sox. Yeah, dude, he was actually like a really really solid player. Like I didn't actually yeah, realize how solid he, he was. was. He had a career eight forty OPS. Uh, was a doubles machine. Like bro is putting up so many doubles. I mean, there was like a stretch from. Excuse me. Um. 84 to 89 he had just about 27 to 30 doubles every season it was it was crazy i mean granted like home runs were in the like 25 to 30s which is still really good at the time but the fact that he was also hitting as many doubles as he was i mean excellent player i feel like you don't really even hear about his name much anymore uh the next one is going to be it's probably going to be uh Brian Giles, man. Like, I actually don't remember Brian Giles so much, so I do, like, I'm sorry, like, to, to the Giles family. Like, you're just, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm only 28, so, like, you know, when you were coming up, I was still, you know, pretty young. But uh, you had a crazy season. Like, actually, like, one of the craziest, like, careers that I've seen in a while that I didn't know about. Like, his career OPS was a 902 for his career, and we're talking 15 years. Um... He was a walks machine, too. His OPS was super high. I mean, he had multiple seasons of a 400-plus OPS, which is crazy. That's a um, name I've heard, like, twice. I know, dude. Like, I actually had to make sure he was a real person. Like, <laughs> so, like, he's he was definitely one of the most underrated ones. Uh, Bobby Abreu, absolute stud. 
Dude, he had like 14 seasons in a row of like an 800 OPS. Uh, like every year he was just a hitting machine. Once again, I feel like it's a name you don't hear much anymore. Absolute tank. Uh, John Olerud, once again, absolute hitting machine. I feel like you don't hear about him much anymore. Everybody remembers, he, you know, he would wear the helmet in the field or whatever. But I, I don't think people realize, like, dude, there was seasons he was putting up like a over a thousand OPS with a 363 batting average through the whole year and almost a 500 on base percentage. That's like one of the best seasons ever. Super ever. underrated player. Um, I'm also throwing in for the top, uh, Johan Santana. And actually not as much from the Met perspective because he was okay on the Mets. It was before that with the Twins. There was a dominant stretch where he was one of the best, if not the best pitcher in baseball. And, I mean, when we think of lefties, definitely, like, up there. But uh, I feel like Johan's, like, you don't really hear about him much nowadays. And, like, I know he didn't have the longest career, but his war was great. I think his war was over Sandy Koufax, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, just a solid player that doesn't get enough recognition nowadays. So that's my five. Oh, shit. All right, I thought there was something else. <laughs> no, all right, so my number five is Jermaine Dye. I mean, listen, he had, like, one of the most solid careers that you'll never hear about again. Um, you know, he hit 300 home runs, had 1,700 hits. Um, I think he, he could have polished off his career with 400 and maybe 2,000 hits, but he didn't get a contract after 2009, which I don't understand. He hit 27 home runs, 81 RBIs, hit 250. I remember that offseason for some reason like it was yesterday. He did not get signed. I was waiting for it. Never happened. And his career was over after age 35. I think he had maybe a good three years left to, to polish off those stats. Um, but he was a World Series MVP for the Chicago White Sox. Um, absolutely just did his thing all career long. Um, you know, he won a gold glove, he won a silver slugger, he was a two-time all-star, but he was, a you know, at his best, he hit 44 home runs and 120 RBIs, you know, at age 32, hitting 315. Um, earlier, when he was a Royal, he was hitting 30 home runs and 100 RBIs. Um, love Jermaine Dye, definitely super over underrated, I almost said overrated, but <laughs> Good number four, I'm going with Hanley Ramirez. Um, I don't think this guy gets talked about um enough i mean yeah granted his attitude probably wasn't the best but i mean we're talking about a shortstop that wasn't known for the pop in his bat but he made it known um you know the year that he came second in mvp 24 home runs 106 rbis 27 stolen bases a 342 batting average i mean he's led the league in runs before he has years where he hit 30 home runs i think my favorite thing about hanley ramirez is how he was able to kind of change his game for the better throughout his career i mean because we thought it was over after miami he goes to la and he hits 345 over half of a year 20 home runs 57 rbis he would have won mvp if he was able to be healthy um that whole season but he did his thing that year then for the red sox believe it or not at age 32 he hit 30 home runs and 111 rbis and hit 286 so throughout his whole career he was a dog he was a hitter love him great fielder you know for the first part of his career um number three i got carlos gonzalez man i mean Ooh, i think cargo. people need to give this like people need to give this guy more respect i don't hear about him at all either and yeah i get it he had a tough ending to his career um but for a while there he was a consistent mvp threat sucked that he was in colorado but 34 home runs 117 rbis a 336 batting average um, we thought he was back when he hit 40 home runs and 97 RBIs in 2015. Um, and then he just kind of tailed off after that. But overall, he was one of the best defenders I've ever watched in the outfield. It was great seeing him field. And on top of that, he had an electric bat. So shout out to Carlos Gonzalez. Now, number two, I'm going Steven Strasburg. And the reason why I say he's underrated Ooh. is because a lot of people say that he could have been a lot better blah 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 what have you but what i'll say is while yes you might be right you know injuries whatever have you he's the third he's third in postseason era he has a world series mvp he was a staple in the nationals rotation always yes he had a little nagging injuries after tommy john up until now he's retiring 
But I think Steven Strasburg should get a lot more, a lot, lot more flowers because he was disgusting. And at the best of his game, he was a World Series fucking MVP. That's how good he actually was and what he meant to the Nationals in 2019. Now, number one, and, you know, I went with Alex Rodriguez as, you know, my most, you know, best shortstop of all time. I'm going with Manny Ramirez as the most underrated Ooh. player. <laughs> oh my gosh, Manny of Ramirez. all time. Wolfie's gonna kill me here. Um, but listen, man, when you talk about Manny Ramirez, you're talking about a guy that I don't care what steroids you took. 165 RBIs, not winning the MVP that year that he did. 1.105 OPS. You know, through his career, he averaged a 996 OPS, 555 home runs, 2,574 hits. He was playing baseball till he was 39 and decrepit on the Tampa Bay Rays. <laughs> Tried to come back for the, the athletics in their minors. I, I just love Manny Ramirez because steroids are not. He was a dog. He's baseball. And you can see, like, he's out there 50 years of fucking age. Hitting, hitting baseballs over the fence in these Japanese and Korean leagues, all these fucking leagues. He is a baseball player, and I feel like he should get more respect because we sit here and we still respect Alex Rodriguez at the end of the day. I mean, I don't want to say respect, but we still respect him recognize as a baseball him. player. Yeah. Huh? We still at least recognize what he brought, yeah, absolutely. Right, exactly, and I think on the other end, we should do the same for Manny Ramirez because he still hit 500-plus home runs. He had some, go go back and look, he had some of the best seasons ever, ever. Like, 165 RBIs is nuts, um, and that's my top five most underrated players. That's good, I'll, and the thing I'll even defend about Manny, because I know I've been staying away from PE guy, uh, PED guys this episode, but the thing is, is that if we are going to, talk about those there were that era of baseball you're right like we bring up other players that have done it like barry bonds and mcguire and sosa but technically like he doesn't get talked about enough but if we're gonna accept that era for what it was like he is one of the best of them yeah so, and I, I hope he makes the hall of fame i know he won't but i hope he i hope he does <laughs> um so real quick we're gonna do a draft and we're gonna get out of here um so the draft is simple me and Wolfie are going to go back and forth. We're going to draft starting pitchers and two relievers, and you guys are going to argue about who has the better rotation. We might even throw it in a little simulation. So, Wolfie, I'll let you go first. All right. So, if I'm going with the – see, my heart wants to go with someone specific, but I'm probably going to save him for later. Uh, I think my number one, my ace, is probably going to be uh, Randy Johnson. I mean, I brought him up already in this Fuck. video. The dude is just a – he is like – the beast like bro is hitting birds like mid pitch like it's crazy like i feel like if you have him at the start of your rotation like how could you lose all right that's fine fuck man um i'm going pedro martinez i wanted to take him second um but you took randy johnson first so i'll go pedro martinez okay that was actually going to be my like other first if i didn't go uh randy Damn. Um, i'm going a little different here um, I know there might be some better pitchers, but for the time, plus he's like one of my favorites. I'm gonna go Tom Seaver. I mean, Tom Seaver was literally like amazing, throwing like complete games all the time. Like today is still like recognized as one of the best pitchers. Heck, I got a statue right over here. Like, bro is like one of the b best pitchers of all time. I I gotta go with him as a Met homer as well. All right, all right. So I'm gonna go with Walter Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Not I like Walter pick. Johnson. Like, when I look back on his uh, stats and everything, I love Walter Johnson. No, you definitely can't go wrong there. So, I'm actually going to go into the PED era on this pick. That's the I've been saving it all episode for this. Oh, no. My number three is going to be Roger Clemens. Oh. Roger Clemens, the Rocket, bro. Him, Randy, and Tom Seaver. I mean, we're talking about, like, a god rotation with those guys. Like, if I'm bringing it, I'm, I'm, I use my one PED pick. I'll, I'll go with that. All right, fuck. Um, now I'll go. I'll go with Greg Maddox. I, I think I have to. You know, Pedro, Walter Johnson, Greg Maddox. Fuck. I think you're whooping my ass here. Uh, but <laughs> I'm going. I'm going Greg Maddox. He was a dog. No, definitely. Honestly, you can't. You can't go wrong with Greg Maddox. Uh, if and if we're talking about dogs, literally, like I've watched games from the '60s of this guy. I can't go wrong with my number four pick is Bob Gibson. Bob Gibson literally is one of the reasons the mound even changed in baseball. Like he was literally a tank. His postseason stats were crazy. His regular season stats were crazy. Dude, like he even said he could barely see home plate because I guess he had some like 
you know, didn't want to wear glasses or whatever it was. So, like, bro was throwing heat, throwing crazy breaking balls. Bob Gibson's one right. of my favorite. So, my my number four, um, I'm going with Sandy Koufax. Um, just got to throw you. him in there. You know, real, really good end to his career there. One of the best pitchers ever. Definitely. Uh, I was going to go modern era for my next one, but I, I can't go wrong. I know we, you know, talked a little bit on the overrated side this year, but I definitely got to go Nolan Ryan as my number five. I mean, if he's my fifth, I think I should be in a good spot. So, so I, th- I think I think when you said modern, I assume you were thinking Clayton Kershaw, right? No, I was actually going to go Justin Verlander. Oh wow! So I'm going to not go with any of those guys. I'm actually going <laughs> to go with. A- <laughs> <laughs> so just scratch that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with another Bob, like like your Bob Gibson pick. I'm going to go with a different Bob, a guy that came in, struck out guys, embarrassed people, went out. Killed some people for America, and then came back and did the same fucking shit and, <laughs> and killed people on the mound. I'm going Bob Feller. Terrible right. joke, most likely, but I'm going Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not bad. Let's just say this: if this was the '60s, your uh, your team would be kicking my ass. So, yeah, I know because I got Bob Feller, Sandy Koufax, Walter yeah, Johnson, Walter Johnson. <laughs> I didn't even realize this. I was just taking like the dead ball. All right. Or... So who? What about relievers? Uh, to be honest, he's actually one of my favorite baseball players of all time. I cannot go wrong. I got to take Mo. Mo Rivera, oh, he, he's just God. literally, like, my dog. Like, I literally, like, if we're taking, like, not even just best pitchers, just one of my top probably 15 players of all time, he's probably up there, maybe even top 10. Damn. You're eating me alive here. Pause. <laughs> oh, I don't even know who to go here. Um, because hmm. I think it's obvious who I have to go here, but all right, fuck it, why not? I'm gonna go Trevor Hoffman. All right, I that's probably okay. Giving myself the first pick. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Yeah, you know I feel like it gets to the point now where it's it can go either way. Um, I'm actually gonna save then for another homer pick. I got one in the starting, one in the back end. I'm also gonna take another Met. Uh, I'm taking John Franco, dude. He was solid. He was like. On an amazing relief pitcher, he was literally a team captain, if I'm not mistaken, which is unheard of as like a relief pitcher to be a captain of the team. He was like a dog. Plus, now I have a lefty righty combo. So, well, I don't give a fuck about that lefty righty shit because I'm going <laughs> Lee Smith. I love Lee. Yeah, Smith. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude was a tank. Yeah, Lee Smith was great. I all right, cool. So that's our draft. Let us know who won. Um, Wolfie kind of ate with this draft, so we'll so we'll <laughs> see. We'll see. Um, but to conclude here, you know, what player, Wolfie, would you not want to steal your wife? And what's the player that you would want to steal your wife? Uh, so I wouldn't want Chris Bryant to steal my wife. Cause I feel like I would never get her back. Cause the dude just is like, he, he, he. <laughs> there was a time in 2015 where what? he was like, I guess like rated like the the best looking baseball player. So I'm thinking about like where I would lose and never get her back. It's got to be Chris Bryant. So I was so random. I look, I did. That some, is so I literally random. looked this up on Reddit and <laughs> for some reason that popped up and I'm like, I like this. Answer. Well, because so now he's just probably that guy that's like, yeah, I play baseball. Like yeah, he's we got, know he doesn't give a shit money. about baseball anymore, but he, yeah. he's probably high as fuck out there in Colorado. Just like, yeah, man, I play baseball. I want to come to the crib. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he's got mad bucks, so, like, yeah. I'm no, not, I'm listen, not I, I went and I said the player that I wouldn't want to steal my wife. Um, I chose an old player just because, Uh-oh. but I'll pick a new player in comparison to this one. I said Barry Bonds because I feel like if Barry Bonds got to the long dick and down, I don't, I'm not getting my wife back. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a solid thing. You're, you're never getting it back. But he took PEDs, so I think in comparison, I guess it would be like Aaron Judge or John Carlos Stanton. Like, I feel like if they got to the dick and uh, down Stanton, on my life, you know what? I might take Stanton as my pick. He's I'm not just, getting her back. Like, Stanton, yeah. he looks good. You know, he's muscular. I feel like he would, like, run through my wife, and I just want to get her back. <laughs> yeah, you probably would. So That's actually a good pick. Damn. All right. Who would I want to? Hmm. I, if I do, I think it'd probably be some minor. Li- I can't even think of like who I would want to. Uh, Tomas Nitto for the Mets because I feel like I'd be able to get her back. Then he's just a scrub. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, listen, Nitto. man. If my wife leaves me, I wouldn't want her to come back. So if I was to pick someone, 
I think it would be Anthony Rendon. Yeah, he's just a scum. <laughs> he's a fucking loser. Yeah, dude, the way he's been talking. So I think I'll be like, like, listen, you know, she left me, but she left me, and she's not doing better. I mean, yeah, he has money. He has a lot of money, but like, <laughs> it's not doing better <laughs> to be that miserable and have that much money. I don't know. Yeah, don't no, know. that's a, that's a solid point. I like that pick. That's a good pick. But listen, y'all, if you guys like this episode, make sure, like I, like we said, there's a giveaway. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, you know, hit that fucking tune in button, whatever button it is. Follow us everywhere. Get in tune. Get on the train or we're leaving without you. JK, we want you on the train. Um, so make sure you guys get in tune because we got a lot coming. Like I said, we got this giveaway that Wolfie announced. We got a second one that we're announcing in probably, you know, a couple weeks, mid-December. Try to do it, you know, holiday um, related. Um, but get in tune. We got we got a lot of content coming. Yeah, yo, just keep us keep around, yo. Built different podcast. We we're here for you. We're here, the built different podcast. We got something for everybody. Have a good day or night, whatever it is when you're watching. Peace. Peace.